Double K is a manufacturer of premium diving equipment in Korea, a vibrant and creative country. At Double K, we focus on constant research to develop innovative and comfortable products to enhance the experience of diving for our customers. We take pride in our cutting edge and stylish designs, providing a sleek yet professional look whether you're in or out of the water. From wetsuits to fins, masks to equalization tools, Double K has all the free diving accessories you will need. Fall in love with your diving with Double K. Atmos, inspired by the ocean. Location, speed, direction, altitude, atmosphere. Mission two is more than a watch. It follows you wherever you go. On the journey to ageless energy, We won't fear the unknown challenges. We won't hold back our curiosity. Your pulse, your tracks, your wake, the direction and achievement in your life. Distance and breath. Merging with the ocean flow. Our sweat cleansed in the currents. gets darker as we descend deeper. But your light will shine through the depth. A variety of color options. Each mission, too, embodies your personality. Good morning. Welcome to day seven of the 29th Ada Deppel Championships here in Roatan, Honduras. Uh, my name is Brandon. I'm a freediving instructor. I'm a breath training coach, and I will be leading the commentary during today's diving, uh, helping you along with the action, explaining what's going on, answering any questions about diving, about physiology, all that good stuff. Uh, and to start off, we'll do a bit of the, as we always do, a bit of the weather. Same, as always. It's, it's beautiful, absolutely stunning. Uh, very little surface movement. It is sunny, it is hot. Uh, water is 28 degrees Celsius. Uh, no current, maybe a bit of movement on the surface, but very little. Uh, yeah, conditions are beautiful and perfect as they've been this entire comp for these last seven days. Can't believe we've been doing this for seven days, you guys. Uh, Today is the final day for women, uh, constant weight, uh, and then tomorrow is the last day for men, also constant weight. Uh, joining me is our opener, Jun, uh, hey. who just did a uh, 60 meter dive. Come pop a squat. Thank you. Whoa. Oh, <laughs> uh, well. Uh, cool, nicely done. How was your yeah. dive? Um, yeah, it's really early in the morning. So yesterday I didn't have my dinner for this dive, and 
in the morning I was just a little stretched and but still really nervous. It's much more nervous than my actual competitions ah. because this is quite big meanings of of this competition as well as myself. Mm. And I was really like thinking of my families and all about all about the double K members and mm. yeah, I was really emotional. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and you're you're with Double K. You're uh, Double K being mm. one of our main sponsors for this event. Uh, so huge thank you to you for all of what you do for not only the the competition that we're at now, but also the diving community. Yeah, sure. I'm also really appreciate for this uh, the event of the World Championship. Actually, the IDAs are really trying hard to moving around the world, mm. and they open all the World Championships in the pool or outdoor. It's not actually easy. It, it's sometimes it's impossible, but they are making this. So I really appreciate to to all, all of the IDA members here or around the world as well. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, big shout out to them. Mm. Uh, cool. So she's another Korean. <laughs> yes, we have our first diver, Young Ju Lee, uh -huh. uh, also of Korea. She's going to be attempting a 70 meter dive using the uh, monofin. Yes. Uh, monofin being one of the most fun ways to dive, uh, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, absolutely love the power that gets generated by a monofin. Yeah. You know, bifins, bifins are great because uh, they're very versatile and you can move around much more easily in them. Uh, but the power that you get from a monofin is just wild. Yeah, this is kind of like if you are driving the, your car, but this is like your formula or some sports car, like yes. Ferrari things. Exactly. Like that. So it's really s like super powerful and the speed up, whatever you want. Mm. So it's really like save us like, you know, the energy. But actually, we feel much more com confidence of when you're going down or coming up, then you, you are not going to be really like a hypoxic right. because it's speed up. So <laughs> Yes, yeah. I mean, the power that you generate from using a monofin uh, is so much more than what you generate with yeah, yeah. any other discipline. Uh, yeah, that's why the monofin constant weight is deepest yes. in disciplines. So. Yep, that's absolutely right. You see Yeonju with her uh, fingers over her mouth. Um, that is something that a lot of divers will do to be able to take a much more full ooh, early turn. Uh, divers will put their fingers over their mouth with their um, while they're doing their mouth fill to keep more air in. Yeah. Um, because sometimes yeah. you can lose it otherwise. It's it's because like they want to keep like um, recharge in the mouth fill. So when you Put the put the hands. Actually, you you have just like you you can get more pressure on your mouth. Mm -hmm. That's really comfortable. Right. Yeah. And when you get a uh, 30 meters or 35 meters island, but you still have a full mouth, then it's gonna make you like really confident to go down. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Actually, she's really famous for the indoor the competition mm. as well. She was in the, in the Ida World Championship as well. Yep. But she's just start the open really? water dive. So, okay. But she already got over seventy. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I think this is the first her competition in the World Championship, mm. and few just few of the open water competition. Before. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I really expect her. Dive and good smile. <laughs> yeah, big smile. Yeah, she's been working very hard, and uh -huh. it's great to see that. You know, we do have a lot of good divers here. Mm, yeah, sure. Yeah, she, okay. and her attitude is, is beautiful in the, in the Korea and in the other countries. Mm. Going down. And she always humble. And yeah. She always thank you and everything. Is yeah. Like, yeah. I like her style. Good. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Uh, so it looks like she got a red card. I don't quite know why. Uh, I believe it should only be a yellow card because she just did an early turn and didn't grab a tag. Uh, it could be that uh, she pulled twice yeah. on the line. Yeah. Uh, you are allowed one pull as you do a turn. Uh, if you do an early turn. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we'll we'll see 
uh, what exactly mm. comes of that. Mm. Uh, all divers, or after, the, the results that we're seeing now are preliminary, yeah, pending right. judges' review. Sure. sure. Um, and then once the judges actually review mm. the results, mm. uh, they put out a sort mm. of intermediate list mm. that the athletes then are allowed to protest against if they would yeah. like. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of happening here and there as well around the competition as well, but mm. the philosophy is we give the red if there is something uncertainty and the, the athletes can prove them by himself with a video review or protest as well. Mm. And they come to whenever they, they have uh, some uh, doubt about her or she his um, resort, then they come to the judge room and then they can protest. It's yep. really democracy. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Don't yeah. worry. Yeah, and the other thing too is that, you know, uh, a diver, you know, there's, um, I believe the rules specifically say if uh, there's ever a doubt or like mm. a split, the rules should mm. go in favor of the athlete. Mm. Um, and, you know, it's definitely something that people or that the judges try and do. And that's also one of the reasons why you will often see a lot of athletes mm. with the... Mm. <laughs> Sorry, I just keep my daughter still. <laughs> oh, cute. Very cute. Yeah. Um, that's why oftentimes athletes will have somebody else recording them as well. Uh, um, yeah. Because they can submit their own footage right. into that's review. Right. Uh, Correct. In the case that you know there's a discrepancy or they, they saw something differently than the judges did. Actually, the evidence is most important thing. That we we actually I'm I'm part of judge. Uh, I mean, one of the judges. So mm. I can maybe say we just judging directly what we are seeing or mm -hmm. what we have. Yeah. And except that we actually know, but uh, we just discussing in the pro protest room. Then their explanations about dive, and you can just thinking, oh, is it reasonable or not? Yeah. And re of course, the literally the rule is really important, so we follow the rule. Yes. But if there is some gray zones, all the time the benefit is on the athlete. On the athlete side. Yeah. Awesome. Good. Yeah. I mean, obviously, the judges don't want to like, no, you know, can't no. like give everyone a red card. They want to give out white cards. Sure. Like, sure. that's what we all want to see. Sure. We want to see people succeeding. Yeah. The, in in here, the Rotan, we also have a lot of uh, issues. I mean, with a uh, sports committee, mm. like they want to make this free, free diving as really like a um, professional mm. sports in the world. So we are really working hard with the judge. So I hope uh, athletes are appreciate to the Athletes, yeah, all the time, yeah, yeah, so yeah, absolutely. Sometimes they are scared. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, but it's not actually. So. Yeah. No, absolutely. Up next, we have Yulia Marevich of Latvia. Uh, Yulia is, of course, the uh, vice president of Ada. Mm -hmm. Kind of a big deal around here. She's going to be joining us soon, uh, and I have a few questions sure. for her about what it's like to. Uh, not only dive during a world championship, but also have such a hands-on mm. uh, job in yeah, the... It's not easy. No. <laughs> no, definitely not. Yeah. Uh, I have a big, big shout-out to her. Cool. Uh, do you want to have one final... Say one more final thing? I don't know. Me or somebody else? I think for you. Ah, uh, yeah. So I just want to say thank you for everybody in Double K and mm. 감사합니다. Uh, 사랑해요. 안녕. Cool. Awesome. Thank you so thank much you. for joining. Thank you. We'll see you later. Have a good day. Actually, Saba. Okay. So let's use Yulia's dive to take a look at the technique that we are seeing and the technique that we want to be looking for in our divers. Uh, hi Carolina, good to see you again. Uh, you asked the question, how can I enter the world of freediving competitions if there is, for now, no official result from any competition? Uh, you can join the world of competitions by finding a local one or one you want to just do in general. Um, I mentioned the other day that divers are able to announce 
uh, up to five meters more than their current personal best when they are diving uh, during a world championship. <laughs> Here's Danny. Um, this can also be a uh, just training personal best, um, but basically what you need to do when you sign up for the competition is the uh, divers need to submit all of their personal bests to the judge uh, panel. Uh, they are kept secret, um, but they are then, uh, you also need to make sure that somebody signs off on those personal bests, so someone that you train with, someone that knows that you've done those depths well. Uh, and that's just sort of make sure to make sure that you're diving safely and not pushing too deep. Uh, but really, if you want to get into competitions, first thing you can do is find a local one. Uh, you can check on the ADA website for any uh, events in your area and sign up, go do the comp. Uh, but as I always say, your first comp should always be just for fun. Uh, go in with no expectations, with maybe the only expectation of yourself to have fun and try new things and enjoy the experience. Uh, oftentimes people put a lot of pressure on themselves uh, to do really well in their first competition. Uh, I did that for myself uh, and it blew up in my face. <laughs> Uh, so, and I've, I've heard a lot of stories like that. So yeah, go to a, go find a competition, go enjoy it, have fun, and then see where you go from there. Maybe you'll like it, maybe you won't. Our diver on the line is Julia Marievich, representing Latvia. The announced depth is 72 meters. The announced dive time is 2 minutes 15 seconds. Two, one, five. Down. So here we see Yulia, she down. has her arms above her head in a streamlined position. Uh, this is important with the monofin technique. Uh, the power, is generated, the power begins being generated in the abdominals. Uh, and then that power goes down the legs. Uh, down. Over the thighs, or over the hips, into the thighs, down over the knees, into the calves, and each muscle group sort of adds a little bit more of the power uh, to the kick itself, and then all of that power then gets moved uh, into the fin, which then flicks, and then we come back up. Ooh, there's a barracuda. Maybe a barracuda. That's kind of cool. So you see a, a big amplitude here in Yulia's kicking. Fifty up. Again, we can see that the power begins to be generated in the abdominals. Uh, this is different from other disciplines uh, like constant weight bifins, where you kick from the hips. Diver with safety. You can also see safety her arms up. above her in a streamlined position. Uh, the arms slightly behind her head. Uh, Yulia has great shoulder flexibility, and so that allows her to keep it in a more uh, beneficial Twenty position. Up. Bam. Taking off her nose clip allowing some of that air to escape out of her nose. Uh, in a minute I'll discuss uh, a bit more about uh, exhaling and why during your freediving course you're told not to and why these athletes are. Okay, big smile, beautiful dive, 72 meters. Nice and easy dive for Yulia. Now we just wait for the judge's white response. Well done, that is a white card. Beautiful dive. Very nice. Okay. Okay. Uh, Carolina also asks another question. I just wanted to know why it could be dangerous to breathe air out of your lungs even before going to the surface. Uh, yes, so in your freediving courses, uh, 
Uh, we are told not to exhale air out under water. We are told to come up to the surface. We are told to do recovery breaths, at least three, uh, before uh, moving on to regular breathing again. Big love to you, Yulia. Uh, now, we do that and we say that because of the partial pressure of gases and the exchange that happens between uh, the lungs and the blood. Uh, gases always want to flow from a high concentration to a low concentration. Um, so, as you come up from, for air, uh, the concentration of gas in your, of oxygen in your lungs is maybe still a bit higher than the concentration of gas of oxygen in your blood. Uh, so, that air still wants to flow from the lungs into the blood. If we exhale a lot of air uh, under the surface, uh, that concentration of oxygen is now lower than what's in our blood. Is that right? No, I've got it confused. Hello, are you going to come join? Cool. Sorry, what we can do by exhaling is basically make it so that the, uh, the oxygen in our blood gets pulled out of the blood back into the lungs. We want the oxygen in the blood, right? Because that's what keeps us conscious. Uh, so if a diver generally will exhale the air uh, underneath the surface, that can lead to a blackout. Uh, now, our divers uh, are diving to depths where uh, another part of the mammalian dive response, uh, the blood shift, is basically moving the extra blood from the peripherals to the core to keep the lungs and soft tissues safe. Um, and as they come back up, the blood doesn't necessarily have enough time to go back from the lungs into the body. Uh, so it means that the lungs are more rigid than what they were when they first took their final breath in. As the gases expand in their lungs as they're coming back up again, uh, they can potentially do damage to their lungs because there's not enough space for the gas to expand into. Uh, so some of our divers will allow air to gently escape through their mouth or through their nose. That's why we see some divers take off their nose clip underwater and bubbles start to stream out. Uh, but generally, uh, for those of us who are not diving competitively, uh, those of us who are not diving uh, super deep, keeping the air in your lungs the whole way is the most important component. Um, and can be very important for safety and for diving, diving safely and responsibly. Cool. Ready? Cool. Hello. Hello. Congratulations on your dive. Thank you. It felt so nice. Did it? Yeah. The oh, water good. is amazing. Yeah. No, it's a beautiful day today. Uh, absolutely loving it. And the team is amazing. And the know, team is amazing it's too. It's so lovely to come to the line and see mm. all smiling people. It's and so feel nice. Welcomed. Good. That's that's so nice. Yeah, that's that's something that I really love about Ada competitions is that the vibe here is always so fun, so loving, and so supportive. No matter no matter who you are, whether you're you know you have multiple competitors all like you know competing against each other, um, or you know you rock up and there's the safeties all there. We celebrate each other. We everyone celebrates each other, and we also you know feel the, the pain of not having a completed dive as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, something that I really love about the free diving community and about Ada events in particular. Uh, I think they're, they're really, really fantastic. Um, so, you're also the vice president of Ada. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what is it like to be competing and to be basically running around doing a million other things at the same time? Uh, it's a kind of normal situation for me. Uh, when I started to free dive, we didn't have any competitions in my home country, Latvia. Yeah. So we started to organize them and we wanted to compete. And uh, me and my co-organizer, uh, Alexei Potapenko, we always, like for many years, did uh, organization. And then at some moment, which is 45 minutes before official top, we needed to switch it off. Right. <sighs> exhale, do your dive. And we did uh, even national records and personal bests during wow. competitions which we organized. So it's part of the process. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Yeah, we were talking with uh, Jennifer Venland the other day about how some athletes uh, really thrive in a high stress situation of like, you know, having, 
you know, having the cameras on, having, you know, this being a world championship event and other divers really struggling with it. Um, so it sounds like you're one of those divers that really thrives one in the... Well, I put like a bubble around me. Okay. And switch it off before. Okay, so you just dive. literally just, it's dive mode yes. now. Yeah. Wow. That's tough. <laughs> well, it, I mean, if you, if you have the practice, sure. If you have the practice, and uh, I have two kids, so I know how to switch off you, when I need to. <laughs> sure, sure. You can switch off and you can deal with high-stress situations. <laughs> amazing, amazing. I would like to One minute. thank... Uh, yes, please. To, ...to say thank you to, to my family, uh, mm. to my husband, who always supports me, my kids, who are waiting for me at home, Aww. and uh, they are looking at me now good they watch my dive good so thank you family love you yay <laughs> miss good. you and shout out to everyone who's watching supporting family friends here uh yeah it's it's so awesome to see the support that we can now sort of the the exposure that we can give to our athletes who are diving now with the use of dive eye yeah. they can actually see what's going on it's amazing opportunity for everybody i know that my students are watching me yes it's also amazing exactly it's it's such a cool cool thing to be able to see these divers competing at such a high level uh being able to see their technique learn from them okay. learn from their failures as well so tell us a bit about natalie She's uh yes from yeah natalie uh not my home country necessarily. I, I live in South Africa. Okay. Uh, but yes, uh, Natalie is South African. Uh, she's attempting a national record here, uh, so 78 your meters. Second, second home for you. Anyway. Yes, basically second home. She's announced two meters deeper than the current national record set by Talia Davidoff at 76 meters. And it's also a continental record. I believe it should also be a continental record as well, yes. This is a continental record attempt. Yeah, Natalie is one of the nicest people I've ever met. Uh, she is so sweet, so supportive, uh, fantastic diver. Uh, has two other national records and continental records set during this competition so far in constant weight bifins and in free immersion uh, at 70 meters and 71 respectively. Uh, and then also did 53 meters constant weight no fins the other day. So she's having a great competition. She was saying that she was a little nervous this morning, um, but was still quite excited to be diving. 50 now! And also for this to be the last day. I mean, he's... Now she been, looks relaxed. Yeah, looks very relaxed. Really nice position here. The gentle bend in the knees. With the line going from the top of the head all the way along the back up to the fins. 60 now! Being a little tiny kicks here and there just to keep up the speed. 70 down. Touchdown. Okay. Coming up. She's starting with her arms down at her sides, and we might up. see her move to putting her arms above her head. Uh, there we go. 60 up. And with, with constant weight, if your arms are down at your sides, that changes where your pivot point is up. in the body. Uh, it moves it from being where we want it to be, which with the arms above the head is at the belly button, up, essentially. So you can safety. use your abdominals quite well. Uh, but if your arms are down, that pivot point moves to your hips. Uh, which means that if you're con starting to continue or continuing to uh, start the movement with the abs, you're getting a lot of extra wasted movement. Twenty up. Um, uh, probably now her legs start to burn. A little bit. Yes, yeah, getting to that lactic phase of the dive. Driver approaching. A very fast ascent compared to the longer descent. Very strong. Very strong, very clean. Grabbing the tag. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful dive by Natalie. White car! And a white car. 
set as a new continental record for South Africa. So that's three new continental records for South Africa during this competition. Uh, well done, Natalie. She definitely has to be very proud of what she's done during this comp. Uh, if anybody has any questions, uh, you can post them in the YouTube chat. I am here answering them if I can. Uh, if you have any questions for Yulia, now is the time to answer them. And then I think Natalie will probably be coming up here to join us in a moment as well. Um, cool. So what, what's next for you after this comp? Uh, well, we will start preparation for new training season in Riga. Uh, we will have this year uh, big, big competitions in, in Riga. After two years of break because of COVID, we will uh, relaunch our uh, quite popular competitions mm. in Europe. Uh, Riga Free Diamond Cup this year we want to move them to July. So guys, you're very welcome to come to Riga to, to compete in the pool. We'll have four disciplines, one day each discipline. Okay, nice. Yeah. Awesome. So, I'll be waiting for you. That's, that's super cool. Not yeah. the is coming. Yes. Yeah, we had a question earlier about what kind of, um, or how one should get into the world of competition freediving. Um, and I suggested just finding a local competition and going, yes. and just having fun. Uh, is there anything that you would want to add on to that? Well, it's very important if you do your first competition to to announce conservatively, get white cards, get excited about competitions, mm. uh, to feel the vibe of, of this community, and yeah. then you can continue. Exactly, that's exactly so right. The first competition shouldn't be very challenging for people. Right. Yep. Yeah, that's exactly right. And actually, when I did my first competition, I announced way too high, got either, I got all yellow cards, and I learned a lot. <laughs> um, yeah, ended up not completing any of the dives that I set out to do. Uh, and was a, that was maybe a little scarring uh, for a while, but then from there I sort of bounced back and now now I've sort of got got the vibe, so. Okay. Yeah. I always tell to my students, we are only white team, <laughs> white card team. There we go, yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Ah, oh, cool. Uh, up next we have Yarmila Slavenchikova of the Czech Republic. Uh, let's see, she... She's very experienced freediver. Very experienced freediver, yeah. Been doing it for a while now. Uh, she has a personal best of 86 in this discipline uh, and has announced 79. So, fairly conservative. Uh, I believe she's had um, a few struggles this competition with uh, relaxation and with equalization. She did receive a red card on the first day uh, on a 76 meter dive because of blackout, uh, but then came back the next day uh, and did a 69 meter uh, free immersion dive. She's been diving since 2004, uh, so fairly long time. Damn, that's impressive. And this is also her favorite discipline because uh, she very much enjoys uh, fin swimming and was a fin swimmer in the past. Yarmila has very beautiful technique, mm. so we'll have opportunity to enjoy it. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's something that I really love about uh, these World Championship events is that you see such amazing technique. Uh, and I, I feel like I'm always saying that the technique is beautiful, the dive is beautiful. But it's because, I mean, we're seeing some of the best divers in the world doing some really, you know, showing off years and years of work and years and years of training uh, in one dive. Uh, let's see, Frank. 
Uh, Walker asks, Dive I showed Natalie grabbed the line just above the candy cane on the way down. She got the white card and is lucky for now. Uh, we'll have to look back and see if she actually grabbed and pulled. After each competition day, uh, judges do video review yes. of each dive. They cannot see what happens uh, below the water. So right. we have two judges right now sitting and watching dive by and make, making notes. Mm. And if, if they see something, uh, they will review the video again and again. Right. And if they see any mistakes, technical mistakes done by athletes, it's going to lead to change of the card. Right. And then but at the there... moment, judges judge what they see. Yes, exactly. And then from there, uh, once the preliminary results are released, the uh, athletes have an opportunity to challenge those results and protest them. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Muscle cramps while diving. Are there any suggested solutions? Drink more water. Drink more water. Yeah, that's that's a big one. Um, yeah. Uh, stretching. Stretching is also a good one. Uh, making sure that you are, you know, your your micronutrients are well uh, taken care of as well. Um, and for acute relief of cramping, um, depending on where the cramp is, uh, if it's a calf cramp, generally you can get those. Grab the fin and gently pull uh, towards your uh, body. Uh, keeping your legs straight. Five, four, three, but generally, two, the preventative one, measures are the ones that are going to serve you best. Two, three, four, this is a five, announced depth of six, 79 meters. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, yes, Lily, that is exactly right. A diver has up to 30 seconds after official top to begin their dive. Okay, she's entered her free fall. Really straight position here. Moving one hand to equalize her uh, little ears again. I believe she's been having a few issues with uh, her equalization. 70, down! Touch down. Okay. Grabbing a tag. Growing up. Sometimes we'll see divers move their arms up, up to a streamlined position immediately after uh, grabbing the tag. Others, as we've seen so far, will keep their arms down at their sides for a few kicks generate some momentum, up. and then slowly move their arms up again. Uh, divers generally will wait a little bit at the bottom uh, because they don't want to open up their uh, lungs too much for any kind of pressure-related injuries, uh, like a lung squeeze or a throat squeeze. Forty up! Diver with safety! Your middle is finishing. Uh, is there anybody that you want to thank? We'll, we'll wait for your middle to finish. Let's, let's wait for, it, for yeah. her to finish. Ten. He's still looking nice and strong. Looking good. Little hypoxic in the lips. Little blue. 
a little pale, but okay. If we watch, we can see how quickly that color will come back to her lips. Uh, that's one of the things that always... Uh, there we go. That always uh, is cool for me uh, to watch. It's how quickly that divers will recover uh, from these quite strong dives. <laughs> Big smile, that is a white card for Yarmila. Very nice dive. Yeah, beautiful. Cool. Before I let you go, is there anybody that you want to shout out to? Anybody you want to thank? Anything you want to say? We want to thank our sponsors, Double K and Jun Kang. Mm. Uh, our sponsors, Atmos, uh, Free Diving Gouges. And of course, uh, Esteban Lanfe, local host mm -hmm. of the competition, who provided us gently with the uh, platform and setup and helped to prepare the safety team for championship. So thank you, we really appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, and of course, we. I want to uh, tell a big thank you to all IDA team that helped to organize this championship. Of course, of course. They're working very hard, including yourself. So I'll, I'll thank you <laughs> for all of your hard work. So and big hugs to Alexander Russo and Sasha Yeremich, uh, who are there working hard every day. Every day. Non-stop. Doesn't seem to end. <laughs> cool. Well, it's a big surprise that it's only two days left until the end it's of the competition. I just wild. realized that tonight I'm laminating the last uh, start list for this competition. Wow. That's... It feels so sad, actually. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was only yesterday when we were starting. Yeah. How did this... I mean, how do we blast through, you know, six, seven days so fast? Blink of an eye. Blink of an eye. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, it's wild. Okay, cool. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's such a pleasure to have you. Congratulations on your dives. Thank you so much. Oh, cool. We'll see you later. See you later. Okay. Can I breathe a little bit? Of course. Now, you want to join me? Cool. Awesome. We've got a revolving door of athletes today. Love it. Uh, hey, Pedro. Good to see you. Uh, Ah, nice. Pedro is uh, uh, tuning in from where I'm sleeping at night. <laughs> hey Bartosz, good to see you again. Yeah, as Yuli was saying, big shout out to our sponsors. Make sure you're following them. Atmos, Double K, uh, the Paradise Beach Hotel, and the Mayan Princess Resort. Make sure you're following me at Brandon Freediver. Make sure you're following Ada at Ada Freediving. Again, we're posting all the results from today's competition, from the uh, previous days on the Ada Instagram and my own Instagram. Also, make sure you're following us. And I'm posting a bunch of behind the scenes stuff as well. So if you wanted to see what it's like to be at a competition, uh, a world championship event, Following me is one of the closer ways that you'll get to uh, experience it. Unless you come and do the World Championship yourself. In which case, we'll see you at some point. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Good, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Making it look easy and beautiful. Thank you. As you always do. Thank you so much. Uh, joined by Natalie. Hi. Of course. Uh, Enchante's diving next. Enchante's diving next, yeah. Uh, uh, really quickly, I wanted to ask, um, so you have three new continental records uh, from during this comp, and... And Tanya's going to smash them all again and catch I mean, <laughs> maybe she will. <laughs> uh, okay. Talia, I mean, Talia is a fantastic diver. She is. Uh, just came off of Vertical Blue and did a lot of fantastic diving there. Uh, yeah, she's a good girl. Yeah. Absolute machine, but I mean, the two of you sort of playing back and forth off of each other yeah. uh, is really great for the sport yeah. and for... for... Growing it in Africa and South Exactly, Africa. exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are very few content records even set for countries in Africa. Um, and so it's really awesome to see that... Yeah. See the important role that, you know, pushing these records has. 
Yeah, I guess Good. the only other country we have is we have Egypt. We have we Egypt. Have a couple competitors there. That's true. We have Walid from Tunisia. Tunisia, yeah, that's true. Uh, we have Anas Shire of Morocco, okay. uh, who dove uh, last year at the Cyprus World Championship. Um, and there's a lot of strong divers in Mozambique. I was there yeah. in January, and there was there was a big um, we had like a sort of freedom festival, and there was tons of really super great divers. They don't get the opportunity to compete. Now. Right. But it's, it's something we're hoping to build with Griffin. Um, Sophia and a couple other people are hoping to start yeah. making some mini comps. Yes, that'd be so nice. Um, yeah, so much of it is is access to depth and also the equipment. Um, I mean, you can you can you can do free diving in a pair of you know disgusting plastic fins. Uh, yeah. But I mean, it's definitely nice to have. You know, having the right tools for the job is is important. It changes the game. It definitely changes the game. I remember going from my first pair of plastic fins to carbon fiber, and who? What a difference! What a difference! What a difference. It is. I mean, I remember my plastics. I couldn't even kick. Yeah. I had so many people people trying to correct my technique, and I couldn't kick for the life of me. Right. I changed the carbon fiber, and yeah. Everything game change. changes. Yeah. No, they're they're beautiful for sure. Yeah. Okay, so Enchante so, is getting ready. She announced 80 meters. She is doing these in her carbon fiber fin. Yes, she is. Ultimate. Yes, that's right. Uh, Enchante currently has the uh, national record set for constant weight at uh, 87 meters. So this is 7 meters deeper than shallow. her... Sorry, more shallow, yes, uh -huh. excuse me. Have you jumped in the water yet? I was in the water this morning. Uh, it was really, really nice. It's getting more and more to the point where I need to spend as much time in the water because I get way too hot. Uh, so we see here that Enchante is using bifins instead of the monofin that we've seen other divers diving with. Uh, divers can definitely use bifins if they want to. Um, it's important to note, though, that this result will count for this constant weight attempt and will not actually count towards the constant weight bifin attempt that she did. Um, there are two different disciplines. Constant weight, you can use either bifins or monofin. And bifins, you can only use bifins. Looks like she maybe did a little pull there. Um, hope not. Because uh, that would be a red card. Fifty down. Could be that she was just moving to try and get into position there. Entering free fall. Sixty down. She's again one of those divers that instead of keeping the line directly in front of her, she will sort of tuck it into her armpit. Yeah, so she can close the eyes and just. Yeah, relax. exactly. Yeah, what are some of the, the pros and cons of down. using this kind of free fall technique uh, where the rope is in your armpit? So it will slow you down a little bit. Um, and sometimes you tend to turn around the line. Mm. So. Dodge down! Which I mean is not up. a bad thing. Um, yeah, I think the main thing is just slowing you down a little bit. So mm -hmm. one seven thirty-five, she turns. Still, is pretty good dive time. Yeah, yeah. She's announced mm -hmm. two fifty-four, so she's about, yeah, pretty much on time. I used to, I used to have my hand on the line when I free fall, mm -hmm. just so I could close the eyes and really zone out. Right. Um, but I've been practicing a method that Mochinos teaches: uh, attention, deconcentration. Uh huh. So I can open the eyes and keep the same relaxation. But okay. the eyes are very soft. Like, it's a very, very soft game. Mm -hmm. on the line. And so you just barely see the line in front of you and just know that it's there. Mm -hmm. I'm strong. She's always strong. She's such a strong diver. Yeah. 40 up. Diver with safety. If you look very closely, you can see her having some contractions here and there. You saw you. You saw me? Did you see me? No, I didn't. 
Looking okay. Twenty up. Having an arm pull. Ten. Legs still looking quite good. Nice technique. Grabbing up nice and high in the line. Looking clean and fresh. Good dive, good dive. Good dive. Last dive. Yeah. Of the comp. Of the comp, yes. <laughs> Hopefully not ever. She's a fantastic diver to be. So sad. It would be so sad to for her just to retire right now. <laughs> Uh, I know she has big plans for cash later this year and for other competitions in the future. White card! Yeah. So that's a white card for Enchante. Beautiful. Cool. Uh, Natalie, anybody you want to thank quickly before heading out? Uh, just the usual thanks to Bruno Say, thanks to everyone on our side. Thank you so much for catching her. She's like my biggest supporter, she's the owner of Unalo. Um, um, so big shout out to her and Unalo. Um, it's a yoga retreat place where I work. Teach, spend a lot of time retreating myself. So yeah, nice. big big shout out to you. And then to Bahamas, to Tyson Tyson Sadler. I'll be seeing you soon. We have a retreat planned in November. Mm. So we have a little board sailing trip with free diving. If you want details, you can check out my Instagram. Yeah. Um, and what's your Instagram? Shout that out. It's uh, free dive underscore yoga underscore Caribbean. Okay. Okay. Amazing. So yeah, shout out to him. See you soon. Cool. Okay, Thank you so much. Day. Have a good Thank day. You. We'll see you later. Hello. We're rotating out. Uh, Yamila is now joining us. Oh, congratulations on your dive. Thank you. Yeah, how, how are you feeling? They confirm. Um, <laughs> good, very good. Water. Good. Water. good, yeah. Uh, I have uh, enough t time to train, like physically in the pool, but unfortunately, I didn't have enough time to train my technical with equalization uh, and so on. Okay. So yeah, I saw you reaching I, to, to pinch your nose. Yes, uh, it helps me to like more relax my neck and to not to move with the head. Mm, so okay. I hold it with my head. Sure. No, totally. And I use my nose. Yeah, no, of course. That's all good. Um, so you used to be a fin swimmer, yeah? Or you used I to do a lot of fin swimming. Mm -hmm. uh, what is... For you, like, what are some of the differences between, you know, doing fin swimming in a pool and then doing constant weight? Uh, it's big, As, aside from big, the depth, big difference. Okay. It's big, big difference. The, the, the competition. When you are fin swimmer, you stay on the, on the start, mm. and your heart rate is maybe 120. Uh, You're ready to go really, really fast. Yeah. And uh, you don't care, whatever. Sure. Here you have to, uh, you have to relax. You have to slow down, mm. and you have to focus of uh, many, many things like technical things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, for those who don't know at home, what what is fr uh, fin swimming? Fin swimming is a sport uh, in the pool. Uh, it has a lot of disciplines. Uh, uh, you use uh, bifins or monofin, mm -hmm. and uh, you have a frontal snorkel, mm -hmm. and you swim on the surface or underwater. Mm. So, and there is a 50 meter, 100 meter, 200, 400, 800. Okay. And yeah. 1500. Okay, 1500, 1500 as well. Oof. So it's it's one of those disciplines where you can more sort of hype yourself up and use the adrenaline like like you do in most other sports of like yes. I'm amped you I'm need excited the speed, you need a force you need of course it's technical right because the movement in the water of course physics, but, of course but you need a speed yeah force. yes and so so time is the deciding factor in that rather than distance with the uh, with free or with um, constant weight um, so you're trying to get through the the amount of swimming as quickly as possible then you are trying to just go down to a depth and come back up. Yes, maybe the part when you turn and you start mm. coming up, this this could be a little bit similar with fin swimming. You sure. use your, or I use my, my condition for it. Okay, okay, cool. Beautiful. So, who is next? Awesome. 
Uh, next is Shaika Erjimin uh, of Turkey. Shaika. Shaika, yes. Fantastic diver. Yes. Uh, she was in vertical blue. She was in vertical blue. Uh, let's see. In the Believe. first discipline, uh, she did a great dive, but unfortunately she had a red card the same like me. Mm. I had a little blackout. And she yeah. she get the red card for one uh, monofin kick. That's right, yeah. The, the, the judges reviewed her technique and but said that it was... This uh, one thing which dive I shift this sport. But without mm. dive I nobody knows. That's true, that's true, yeah. One minute. And we can see uh, Fatima is there in the water with her. Fatima is not diving today. Ah. Uh, she received, or she had a blackout uh, on the yes, I saw no it fins day. Yeah. I think she has some ear problems the day before. So. She's had, she yeah, she got oh. here, had ear problems, and then didn't actually dive until her first, uh, the the day that she got first in free immersion, I believe. And I think she was uh, competing in vertical blue. Mm -hmm. So she yeah. did a good dives there. Yeah, let me quickly pull up those results. Let's so we can so go over quickly what she did. She is. She could be tired after so long. Yeah, time. I mean she's she's been diving. She's been diving. Uh, did all the disciplines during this comp. She did all the days during the vertical blue. Uh, she did 88 free immersion, uh, 57 constant weight no fins, 94 uh, mm, yes. uh, constant weight, uh, which were all national records. Uh, she also announced 101 on the last day of vertical blue, uh, but had an early turn. So she's announced one meter more shallow. Uh, and this is a national record attempt. This is a national record attempt. 20, down. 30, mm. down. Very nice. Yeah, very fluid and slow movements. One of my, one of my fin swimming trainer saw this kind of competition. 40, down. I was surprised. That Almost nobody knows how to swim with monofin. Ah, okay. <laughs> but Shaika is good. Yes. Shaika is good, I think. <laughs> Shaika feel the water. Down. Do you think there are any differences in technique between um, doing a constant weight? Yes, I like it. 60, down. Boots, um, the physics, is, it doesn't, it works different way because mm. if you... Early turn at 66. Uh, oh. Oh, that's unfortunate. It's maybe too much of competition. Yeah, I mean... Too much... Uh, the six days at Vertical Blue, the four days here... Yes. And I mean, you know, pretty much going straight from Vertical Blue to here with a few uh, warm-up days and official training days. For her technique is nice. It's good. very nice. The hands, the upper part mm -hmm. of the body is more or less in peace. Mm -hmm. like when sharks swim, the, no, bye, bye. the head is on one line mm -hmm. and the rest of the body is moving. Okay, this right, is okay. yeah, so the top part of the body stays pretty still <coughs> and only the from basically the abdominals down is what's moving. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, it's much more efficient and much keeps you in much more streamlined position. Yes. Okay, so we're seeing when we okay. dive down and up, mm. we have another force uh, or another energy like uh, gravitation and mm. yeah. this kind of forces. Oh, oh she's disappointed. Yeah. I think she's 
mentally tired. <laughs> or if I am yeah. in her position, I will be mentally tired. I would be too. So, so many competitions. Yeah. So that is a yellow card. She will receive some points for doing the dive, uh, but obviously not all the points that she would have received if it was a completed dive. Going down two. Okay, I go okay. to hug her. Cool, sounds good. Thank you so much for joining. Is there anybody you want to shout out to or thank or uh, say hello to? Yeah. I have to say hello to my daughter. She's on the beach. Ah, okay. I didn't know she was here with you. Kiss. Yes, she's oh. here with me all the time. Oh. But because of the boat is uh, small and sure. there is, here is not so much space, yeah. it's not good to take her here. Of course. And of course. I think she has more fun there with That's sand. Fair. And That's water. fair. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Thank you so much for joining and congratulations on the comp. Thank Very you. nicely Thank done. you. Bye. Goodbye. See you later. See you later. I said 100 Okay, so as that was our uh, first potential podium spot, uh, that means that Enchante Gallardo will move up into third. Uh, again, as the uh, total number, excuse me, the total number of points, uh, sorry, for, uh, yes, total number of points will count. Um, Cheka's position overall will go down, and so Enchante will move up. Uh, let's see, Piccolo in the chat says, uh, can you equalize by pinching your nose when you go deep? Uh, pinching your nose is part of it. Uh, basically what you're doing is you are, as you pinch your nose, you are blocking the air from escaping out through your nostrils. Um, so by uh, pinching your nose, you then move to raise and lower the larynx and keeping the glottis closed, or keeping the vocal folds closed. Um, if you're doing it correctly, you should see your nostrils flaring. I don't know if you guys can see that. <laughs> Maybe it's a little blurry. Um, but that should also be equalizing your ears. Um, a lot of divers will wear a nose clip uh, as they don't, so they don't need to pinch their nose. Uh, I do love all of the love and support that uh, our athletes give each other here. Um, it's not like a lot of other sports where there are very strong rivalries or very just like intense, deep, like competition being first type vibes really. Uh, for the most part, everyone generally loves each other and hangs out together and supports each other. Um, and it's a really beautiful, really beautiful community to be a part of. Uh, and that's one of the things that you will begin to discover if you get into the world of freediving and into the world of competitive freediving in particular. Uh, you'll come to an, an event like this or to a smaller competition and depending on how many days overall it goes, uh, you'll have time to spend uh, with other athletes. You'll go out for dinner, you'll hang out, you'll talk about free diving, you'll share things that you're doing, hear new things that other people are doing. Uh, it's a really cool community to be a part of. Uh, and it's something that I feel truly happy to have been able to discover uh, and uh, join the community in. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. Up next we have Jennifer Venland uh, from Germany. She will be uh, attempting a 102 meter constant weight dive. This will also be a national record attempt. Jennifer is the previous world record holder in constant weight bifins before uh, Mariana Gillespie moved it to 100 and, or sorry, 97 meters. Uh, Jennifer held that at 103 meters, uh, I believe for about a year now, maybe a little bit, a little bit longer than a year ago, um, she held that record.
Jennifer is a big proponent of training in the pool for most of your uh, freediving training and then spending time working exclusively on depth and equalization and uh, turning on the dive response as it pertains to the blood shift and spleen effect. Uh, the mammalian dive response, uh, MDR, is a series of adaptations that our body has to being uh, submerged in water. Uh, the blood will move from our extremities to our core, our heart rate will decrease, uh, and then as we add pressure on top of, uh, on top of our body, uh, the blood will move from our extremities into the tissue around our lungs, uh, basically making them, protecting them from continuing to uh, ooh, lost my train of thought. Uh, basically will stop uh, the lungs from entering into a place where they are too small, uh, potentially hurting the tissue. And also the spleen will eject some oxygenated blood into the body, which can typically add around 30 seconds onto a uh, static breath hold time. Um, Jennifer trains in the pool, training her uh, technique, her strength, her stamina, and then will spend a couple of weeks in, generally in the dive location she's going to be diving at. Uh, and she will work on equalization, work on turning on those dive responses even more intense um, and more strongly. And then she dives. And sets national records. Five, four, three, two, one, go. On the Castaway No Fins Day, she set another national record of 59 meters. And we'll hopefully see her do another national record now. Brian, you are absolutely right. Uh, we should definitely not be too disappointed about an early turn. Uh, as I always say, it is important for a diver to turn if they ever feel like they need to. Um, <clears throat> if you have a reason to early turn, then that is the correct reason for you to early turn at the time. Um, it's always better to turn early, come up and dive another day, than it is to continue pushing and risk any kind of injury. Uh, one of the things that I talk about quite a lot with my students when I'm teaching is uh, the fact that when you have an injury, you will recover, uh, but generally that will also create scar tissue. Uh, if you perforate your eardrum, if you have uh, a lung squeeze, throat squeeze, any kind of sinus squeeze, all of those things will create scar tissue inside of the body. Uh, scar tissue is very... Uh, it's much more rigid than healthy skin and healthy tissue. Uh, and the issue comes as you move again into the future and you do your dive, uh, where the scar tissue attaches and becomes healthy tissue. That is a very uh, weak part of the overall membrane. And as such, that can tear again more easily in the future. 90 down. Um, so it's always better to avoid injuries uh, by doing an early turn than it is whoop, a little blurry there. Uh, it's always better to do an early turn and avoid injury than it is to push down. and risk that injury. Coming up. Okay, Jennifer starting with her arms down at her sides. 90 up. Keeping her arms up. 80 up. Seventy up. You can see that she placed that tag on her leg. Uh, she has attached a piece of Velcro, the, uh, the scratchy side of the Velcro, uh, to her leg. And the tags themselves are made of the soft up. side of the Velcro. Uh, so all divers have to do is shove that, uh, rub it alongside a up. piece of Velcro and attach. And Jennifer has a really nice technique uh, where she will grab the tag, 
and immediately move to rub her arm, her hand along her thigh, attaching it to that little patch, and then moving right up into a straight line position. It's incredibly efficient. Ten. Having a really nice technique here. You can see the movement starting in the abdominals. Grabbing up nice and high. Strong recovery. Keep breathing. Keep breathing. Seeing a loop. Okay. Very nice recovery. So we saw a little bit of a samba there. Uh, but because she was able to grab nice and high on the line, uh, she was able to keep her uh, airway out of the water. White car! And that is a white car. Wowee, that's how you do it. And that is why, Nadav, I hope you're watching. That is why you keep your airways high out of the water. <laughs> um, yeah, a diver can have any kind of uh, samba or thing uh, up out of the water, and as long as their airways do not dip, they are. Uh, there is no issue. Very nice recovery. Love to see that. <laughs> uh, yeah, Lily, I am also having a heart attack. <laughs> okay. We have one more diver coming up. We have Mariana Gillespie of France. Uh, she's going to be attempting a 104 meter dive, which is going to be a new national record. Uh, let me quickly check something on my phone here. If you guys have any other questions, please do feel free to post them in the YouTube chat. Uh, I am there, I am watching, I am answering as best as I can. And if I don't have the answer, I will find somebody who can get it for you. Uh, let's see here. Okay, boom, 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 boom. Let's see, why is this not working? Oh, sorry, you probably don't want to see me on my phone the entire time, huh? Oh, uh, let's see. So today is the last day for women. Uh, we have a bunch of people coming through. Jennifer, you want to come say hi? When you have a moment? Okay, cool, perfect. Awesome, yeah, we have lots of people coming through today. Uh, this is the last day for women. We're seeing some pretty, pretty epic dives uh, today. Let's see here. Tony's loading so slowly today. Okay. So one thing I did want to check on, uh, because my notes are incorrect, uh, is the current world record uh, for Constantway No Fins that is set by Alenka uh, Artnik of Slovenia with 114 meters. Uh, so pretty, pretty deep and epic dives uh, from our ladies here. Cool. This is our final dive before we take a quick camera break. Uh, please make sure you're sticking around to the very end. We also have, uh, in addition to Mariana attempting a new national record, uh, we have uh, Mia Ho of Chinese Taipei, and also Anna Rivera of Honduras attempting national records as well later on in the day. Hello. Hello. Congratulations. Thanks. Beautiful dive. Ma, not my most beautiful. <laughs> but great recovery at the, at the top. Mm. Um, we were talking about how uh, it's important to grab nice and high on the line. Yes. Um, <laughs> it was a discussion here in the comp a lot. Yeah. Many very close cases, so... Yeah, absolutely. And it definitely definitely pays to grab high. Um, yeah. Maybe not as high as how Michael grabs. I don't know if you've seen... I think uh, he climbs up over the... <laughs> he, I suspect that on yeah. the last day he will probably try and climb up onto the, uh, the rope support thing. Probably, thingies. probably. Um, <laughs> climb on the boat directly. Yeah, climb on the boat directly. You know, yeah. who needs to grab on the line? <laughs> Um, yeah, tell us a little bit about what it's like to dive to 102 meters. Uh, that's that's yeah. deep. 
Ooh, <laughs> good question. <laughs> well, to be honest, it feels like any other dive, like mm. at least on the way down. Mm. When I like, I had a bit difficulty to equalize, so I was mm. really happy to make it. Okay, very nice. Very and then nice. I grabbed the tag, and I was very relieved. And then I had quite strong narcosis today, so mm. I think my dive was much slower than expected. Sorry, sorry. We have to keep it down a little bit. Yeah. So. Um, a little bit slower today. Okay. Yeah, and more narcosis than I'm used to. Mm. So. Okay. <laughs> uh, do you find that narcosis for you goes away? Like yeah. before you come up or? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, it depends. Okay. Like usually it comes on the way up after the turn, like 10, 15 seconds after the turn. Okay. And then I, sometimes I take it to the surface. Today, I don't think, today I was just hypoxic. Okay, <laughs> sure, 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 sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for those who don't know what narcosis is, um, do you want to explain a little bit about what it is? Uh, well, <laughs> um, it comes from the um, solution of the gases in the blood. Mm -hmm. So with the high pressure down there, the gases can solve better in the blood. Mm. So it's mostly CO2 and nitrogen right. that are also like narcotic gases. And when they get solved in the blood so much, you feel a little bit drunk. You feel a little drunk, feel a little weird. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, gases are always flowing from a high concentration to a low concentration. And if in the lungs there's yeah. a bunch of extra gas sitting there, it's going to flow more intensely into the blood. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was a little bit prepared for a harder protocol today mm. because I had stomach issues the last few days. Oh no. And I know that my blood pressure can also drop when I get to the surface when I feel like this. Okay. Uh, so I was still sure I could do the dive. Mm. Um, otherwise, I would not have attempted. Sure. Um, but I was like in my visualization already like, okay, I really have to be focused on my protocol. Um, yes. So just grab high, breathe, breathe yeah. and hold on. Right. Yeah. Is that something that you think about uh, on your way back up again? Like preparing no. for the next step? No. Okay. Well, I prepare for it uh, the last five meters before the surface. Okay. But below that, I'm just swimming. Just swimming yeah. and focusing on that. Cool. So here we have Mariana, okay. Mariana 104 Mariana, national record Jesse, attempt and four gold. Yeah, go Mariana. One hundred and four meters. Dive time is three minutes zero five. Twenty now. We were talking with Yamila about uh, the uh, or the monofin technique. Yeah. Uh, with where we want to try and keep the top part of the body nice and stable with yeah. the arms above our heads yeah, exactly. and only move from our uh, abdominals down. Yeah, and actually with the Taras monofin, um, if, at least when you get the super soft one, mm. you can swim it um, actually almost almost from the ankles. Really? So you just use your feet to wiggle a little bit. Oh, wow. Well, of course, a little bit the abdominals, but um, you see how um, Alessia is swimming. Yeah. And I try to be a little bit the same just very small amplitude and mm. yeah faster 60 kicks. Down. Yeah when I okay. analyze my dives um, I'm looking forward to see where I exactly lost my time. Mm. <laughs> I can't really down. tell. Sure. I'm pretty sure it was on the way up because I was quite narked and I don't really remember much happening between 90 and 30. Fair enough, yeah. <laughs> 80 down yeah, it's wild how like between the narcosis and just yeah. like the rhythmic movements, you can lose track of time yeah. so easily. Ninety down. Yeah, it's hard to see on the screen. Yeah, but she looks nice and relaxed. Yeah, so relaxed. Moving to reach for a tag. Yeah. Oh. Touchdown! Okay. Coming up! I'm pretty sure she already has a smile in her face now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And very strong up. kicking. Yeah, she's a very like physical diver, so, mm. so she puts all her strength into it. Yeah. I'm more like the one who wants to up. Uh, like somehow just float through the water. Sure. Take, with as take little more, movement as possible. Seven, slow and gradual up. approach. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean Mariana is outrunning the dive eye. Yeah. 60. Up. Yeah, I think her usual speed up is like 1.3 meters. Or, um, okay. Yeah. 50 up. Yeah, but this um, type of kicking also makes you tired more easily. So that's why you can see she. Yeah, she's just the amplitude. 
right, um, recruiting a bit more of yeah. the bigger muscles uh, yeah. than having the smaller muscles I going. was so knocked, I don't even remember if my legs got tired. Probably they did, <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't really know. Yeah. 20 up! Okay, come on Mariana. Come on Mariana. Seems... Oh. Oh, oh no, no, no! So we do have a blackout. She's being supported by the safety team. Oh, this is so unexpected. She's mm. so strong. I'm so sorry, Mariana. Uh, so they're going to remove the facial equipment. They're giving rescue breaths. They're going to move her over to the medical area where she's going to be supported. She's got a big smile on her face though, already yeah. back. Yeah, she's already back and breathing. Yeah, actually her lips look totally fine as well. Yeah, they're blue. <laughs> it was strange because the blackout came so quickly. Very she quickly, She still looked yeah. like strong, like normal, and then like from one second yeah. to the other, she lost the rope Line and... Line up! Yeah. Line up! And, and then, break, yeah, but it can, it can happen up. like that sometimes. <laughs> uh, uh, she's okay. conscious, she's... Super okay. unexpected. Yeah, very uh, unexpected. Absolutely beautiful dive though. I mean, well, she technology. had an amazing competition here. It was really, really strong dives and um, she got the world record on the first day. Yeah, first day world record. I think we should not forget that this is like a very long competition. It is. Um, and to be honest, I'm happy I'm done now. <laughs> because it takes a lot of energy and power to, to pull through so many days, days of diving. Right. Especially when you do all the disciplines, you know. Yes. And each day you have to focus on a new discipline. Right. So well, each day is also like a mental, you know, you're mentally switching yeah. from one thing to another and mentally yeah. preparing. Yeah, and we all didn't do a constant weight dive, monofin dive, for a few days now, like uh, like 10 days. Right. We, we didn't do a dive in the discipline. Right, um, exactly. So it's also maybe something you should not forget. So I went with my little fins yesterday into the water just to feel, feel um, what, what it's like. Yeah, and what it would be like to have fins on the feet finally again. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, because free immersion and no fins both have no yeah. fins. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, going from from that to having the fins back on yeah. and the, yeah. the different movements that come with with uh, constant weight, yeah. uh, definitely, definitely interesting and different. Cool. Uh, anybody you want to thank before we go to a camera break? Uh, well, I want to thank like everybody who uh, was watching today. And uh, I know I have friends sitting in uh, Malaysia. I have uh, my family, of course, at home in Germany. And uh, my coach is in Puerto Rico right now. So, well, everybody all around the world who was watching and cheering for me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Amazing. I'm happy. Uh, and now I need a break. It's, and it's a glass of wine, a, maybe. A glass of wine, time for a nap. <laughs> yeah. Like, it'll be perfect. Yeah, I just have to go and take a doping test now. That's right, That's yeah. the usual game. So. Usual game. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure. Yeah. Um, thank you guys for watching at home. We will see you guys Woo! in about 20 minutes uh, for part two of today's Constant Weight Women's Diving. Good luck cool. to all the ladies. Good luck to all the ladies. We'll see you guys soon. Bye. Double K is a manufacturer of premium diving equipment in Korea, a vibrant and creative country. At Double K, we focus on constant research to develop innovative and comfortable products to enhance the experience of diving for our customers. We take pride in our cutting edge and stylish designs, providing a sleek yet professional look whether you're in or out of the water. From wetsuits to fins, masks to equalization tools, Double K has all the free diving accessories you will need. 
Fall in love with your diving with Double K. Inspired by the ocean. Location, speed, direction, altitude, atmosphere. Mission two is more than a watch. It follows you wherever you go. On the journey to ageless energy. We won't fear the unknown challenges. We won't hold back our curiosity. Your pulse, your tracks, your wake, the direction and achievement in your life. Distance and breath. Merging with the ocean flow. Our sweat cleansed in the currents. gets darker as we descend deeper. But your light will shine through the depth. A variety of color options. Each mission, too, embodies your personality.
Double K is a manufacturer of premium diving equipment in Korea, a vibrant and creative country. At Double K, we focus on constant research to develop innovative and comfortable products to enhance the experience of diving for our customers. We take pride in our cutting edge and stylish designs, providing a sleek yet professional look whether you're in or out of the water. From wetsuits to fins, masks to equalization tools, Double K has all the free diving accessories you will need. Fall in love with your diving with Double K. Atmos, inspired by the ocean. Location, speed, direction, altitude, atmosphere. Mission two is more than a watch. It follows you wherever you go. On the journey to ageless energy, We won't fear the unknown challenges. We won't hold back our curiosity. Your pulse, your tracks, your wake, the direction and achievement in your life. Distance and breath. Merging with the ocean flow. Our sweat cleansed in the currents. gets darker as we descend deeper. But your light will shine through the depth. A variety of color options. Each mission, too, embodies your personality. Welcome back. We are here in Roatan, Honduras for the 29th Ada Deckworld Championships. We are coming into part two of today's dives. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. My name is Brandon. I'm a free diving instructor and a breath training coach. And I am leading you all through the commentary and the action here today. Uh, we have Chantal Steiner jumping right in. Uh, She's announced a 70 meter dive, announced dive time of two minutes and 20 seconds. Uh, the announced dive time doesn't necessarily, doesn't, well, it doesn't matter at all to the overall scoring and ranking, uh, but divers do uh, have to give a announced dive time, uh, partially for the safeties to be able to know and be able to plan around their uh, surface recovery, their own stuff, and also know sort of when to expect a diver. Uh, if a diver is drastically off their announced performance time, they are more prepared to be like, oh, okay, well, this, this could be something going on. We'll uh, make sure that things are okay. Be more ready to jump in. This is basically just a safety procedure. See Chantal diving with her arms at her sides. Uh, this is definitely a much more relaxed position. Uh, as we said, uh, 
the diver will keep their arms above their heads in a streamlined position, uh, and that will allow for a faster movement through the water. Uh, somebody in the chat uh, on YouTube was asking, uh, saying that uh, Jennifer Venlin looks quite uh, comfortable with nice and straight uh, arms. Uh, and asking if that's a natural position for her or if that's something that she has to engage and keep down. muscles uh, tight with. Uh, <clears throat> for Jennifer, she said that she does a lot of flexibility training and so that's a very comfortable position for down. her. Uh, other divers may find that is not quite as comfortable and will move their arms down to float at their sides. Especially during Dive the uh, kicking, uh, they will sometimes do that. Although, as we said before, that's not necessarily the best for the technique itself. As again, the, the movement begins Six, in the up. abdominals. Uh, and by putting our arms above our heads, the center of mass of our body gets shifted to, uh, to exactly to our abdomin up. abdominals. Uh, and so we can generate more power. Uh, if our arms are at our sides, the center of gravity shifts to our hips. And if Four we move power up. through Diver our... Uh, abdominals still with our arms at our sides we end up wasting a bit of that energy going to the top Dirty of our body up. and you can sort of tell that with uh, divers who have a lot of big movement in their upper body uh, as they are diving up. you see pretty good technique here from Chantal a little movement is okay uh, but if you're Dead. sort of waving your arms out in front of you with big movements up and down that is not uh, not optimal and means that you uh, need to shift where your uh, kick is starting from. Clean protocol. Looking good. Look at that punch zoom. <laughs> Lily, I will get to your uh, very mean question momentarily. Okay, there's the tag, so there's the white card. Beautiful dive for Chantal. Great way to finish off the comp. She worked very hard during this whole whole competition uh, and definitely has earned a bit of a rest now. <laughs> okay, so Lily has asked. Uh, who is your favorite athlete? Um, that is an incredibly mean question to ask. <laughs> um, there are so many, so many factors that go into what would make a favorite diver. Uh, I mean, are you going based on raw technical skill? Are you based on? Uh, the person that's the most fun to watch? Are you talking about the person who is the most fun to hang out with outside of the water? Um, there are so many things that go into that. Um, so many minutes, chicks to confirm. Confirm, Roger that. I mean, obviously, I don't have one favorite diver. Uh, these are all my friends, I love them all very much. Um, let me think about it and I'll get back to you. Uh, looking at the results as of now, uh, we have Jennifer Venland uh, in first place getting gold with 102 meters. We have Enchanta Gallardo who did an 80 meter dive and got second. And Yarmila Slavenchikova of the Czech Republic who has received a white card for a 79 meter dive. Uh, as always, these results are uh, unofficial. They're pending review by the judges. Uh, as we spoke earlier with uh, Yulia Marevich, uh, the uh, Ada Vice President, she informed us that uh, there are judges on the shore watching the dive, I watching the stream now, uh, and making notes for anything that they see that might be considered uh, against the rules or uh, potentially might change the results. Uh, they review them further later on in the day and then give their final results uh, from there, and then the athletes can protest uh, those results if they would like to. There's a protest pro uh, process, and then from there, the final, final results are released at the end of the day, around five o'clock-ish. Uh, 
Uh, if you want to make sure you're keeping up with all the results from this competition and from today, you can click on the link that is pinned in the uh, YouTube comments, sorry, on this side. Um, <clears throat> you can go to the Ada website, you can scroll down to the bottom, and each day has the results from that day uh, with the card given, the depth realized, uh, and a uh, reason for if there was a yellow card or a red card. Cool. <sighs> Love you too, Lily. <laughs> Even though it's a very mean question to ask. One minute, 30 uh, seconds. Douglas Childs asks, what does it take to become a safety diver? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, generally, it requires experience. Uh, the safety divers who are here uh, have a lot of experience uh, safetying other athletes. Uh, generally, at World Championship events, we have a really great team of safeties who are uh, well-trained, who have gone to a lot of competitions, who have a lot of experience watching athletes uh, who are looking for signs of hypoxia One in them minute. and who know, they know the signs of the hypoxia, of hypoxia in the athletes themselves, individually. Uh, but it all starts by going to a local competition and volunteering to be a safety. Uh, you will work with a uh, head safety who will sort of work with you, they will train you, they will uh, run drills with you, and then you will actually get some experience doing safety during a competition. Uh, from there, if you like it, you can continue seconds. doing it, uh, join the community, and then maybe one day we'll see you at a World Championship event. 20. Amber Burke in the water now, announced 70 meters, representing Australia. Ten. The current Australian record is set by Christina Senez de Five, Santa Maria four, three, at 80 meters. Two, one, okay, this is off. Plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Amber's had a great comp so far. On the line, she representing has, Australia, we have uh, Amber Bull. The now that is 70 records. meters. Uh, Dive time is 2 minutes 30. 2, 3, oh. And I believe my notes say that she has a new national record of free immersion at 58. Uh, let's see. Check my other notes. Uh, sorry, 68. Uh, I know that was not a national record. Uh, she did an early turn on a constant down. weight, no fins day. Once again, you saw her uh, moving her hands to her mouth to be able to hold in a little bit more of a mouthful. Uh, getting nice and full. She's been having a few issues with EQ. Uh, and so by trying to get a little bit more air into her mouth fill, she'll be able to take that just a little bit deeper. Uh, Hopefully, easily get her to 70 meters. 60 down! She's looking really nice and relaxed at the moment. Pass down! Beautiful, grabbing a tag. Ooh, I believe she may have. Okay, no, she may. I think she grabbed two tags and still has the one tucked into her hood. Okay, 60 good. up! If a diver does make it all the way down to the bottom, but does not retrieve a tag, uh, that is considered a yellow card, uh, because one of the requirements to get a white card is to present a tag to the judges. So even if the tag falls off at the very last minute, um, if there's no tag to present to the judges, that is a yellow card. That's what we saw uh, yesterday with Afa Zhang, Chinese Taipei. Uh, he came up, uh, had the tag attached to the back of his neck, uh, and then... <clears throat> At one of the last minutes, uh, it fell off, and there was nothing to present. Up. So he received Dive a yellow card, even though he uh, reached his depth. Amber looking nice and strong. Twenty up. As we were talking about with Yarmila, uh, one of the things that happens for these divers is uh, a lot of lactic acid gets Ten. built up in the legs. Uh, it's basically 
like you've run from a very, very, very long time and you have to keep running. It's like running through molasses and everything is stiff and sore and it's just hard to move. But Amber's looking good. Nice clean surface protocol. You can see she has a dive computer uh, attached to her neck weight. Uh, probably has a dive alarm set and that's why she was able to uh, know when she was getting close to the bottom and move to her, move her arms to begin to be prepared for getting the tag. That's a white card for Amber. Beautiful dive. We'll see if we can get her up here in a moment to have a brief chat. Very nice dive. Love to see it. Once again, if you guys have any questions, please do feel free to post them in the chat. I am happy to answer if I can. And if I can't, I'll do my best to find someone who can answer them for you. We see uh, that Shaika uh, was attempting a 100 meter dive and unfortunately had a early turn. Um, as we were saying earlier during her dive, there, if you have a reason to early turn, that is the correct reason for you. Um, it's always better to do an early turn and uh, make sure you are preserving yourself, make sure you're not pushing yourself too hard. Um, you can always dive another day if you dive safely. If you push too much and you push past a point where you should be, uh, that's when you risk injury and that's what can stop you from diving for longer periods of time. Um, so, yeah. Three minutes. Always dive safely. And turn early if you want to. It's okay. I give you permission. <laughs> Up next, we have Mia Ho of Chinese Taipei. She's going to be doing a, 60, a 70 meter dive as well, and this will be a national record attempt. It is hot and sunny up here on the platform. I'm struggling a little bit. <laughs> uh, I did not take Matt Molina's advice yesterday. I forgot to bring a towel with me that I would dunk in the water and put on my neck. Maybe the last day I'll finally learn to remember. Hey. Hey. Come join. Yes, you absolutely <laughs> may. Congratulations on your dive. Thank you, thank you. It was beautiful. It was really nice to finish on a white card. Yeah. Yes, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, how are you How are you feeling about the competition overall? Um, it's been really nice, yeah. Competition's been good. Good. Yeah, don't know about my own performances, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that happens. It, it can definitely happen, yeah. I mean, you know, with, with a competition like this where each day you basically have only one attempt to do one dive, yep. Yep. Uh, so it adds a lot, of, a lot of extra pressure yep. on you. Yeah, a lot of pressure. Yeah, especially when you like focus on one discipline in particular, then you literally only have one dive. <laughs> exactly, exactly, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it, it definitely, I mean, for, for those watching at home, it's a good way to sort of see the breadth of what is possible in freediving, like seeing all the different disciplines, uh, seeing different techniques from each, people, from each person. Uh, and that way I quite like it. Yeah, yeah, for um, sure. Yeah. Cool. Let's see, so we have Mia up next. Uh, she's going to be doing a 70 meter dive, which will be a national record attempt. Oh, nice. There's a few of us doing 70 meters today. Yeah, yeah, quite yeah. a few. It's a nice uh, round number. <laughs> exactly. I think there were four total that, uh, that announced 70 today. This is my first time back in the like to 70 meters in about four years, so for me okay. that's really nice to do yeah, that dive yeah, today. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you've been stuck in Australia for the last three years. Yeah, yeah, I haven't been able to do any depth training, so yeah, yeah. it's really nice well, to be back here. And, yeah, no, it was. And these conditions are as good as it gets. <laughs> I mean, really, this the conditions here are fantastic. There's 
I mean, was there any current down there? I didn't notice any, no. I, was, okay, I yeah. think I was quite close to the line. Um, yeah. But I, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we've seen a lot of divers with really beautiful free falls and, you know, not having any sort of movement off the line at all. Yeah. Yeah, we've been so lucky, actually, with the conditions this week. Mm. Yeah, um, conditions have been beautiful. So we did have some current in training, so, but mm. for competition, it's been perfect. Awesome. Okay, nice big breath. A bunch of packs. Oh. Whoop, okay. Avoided not bringing the cool noodle down. Yeah, it's not never good. Uh, never good. I've seen that before yeah. a few times, and I've seen some people power through and bring the cool noodle oh, down. Oh no! With them. Yeah, this is uh, part of the reason I don't use a noodle because I'm so worried about it getting caught in the right. mono pin. And <laughs> A lot of extra points. Um, it definitely is. Okay. Already at 40 meters. Yeah, she's moving quite quickly. Way too fast. Good speed on. Yeah, definitely trying to cut through that positive buoyancy on the surface. Yeah. Uh, to get right to that free fall. Still doing a really small kick. Down. Yeah. I find it's quite difficult to free fall with the monofin on, so it helps to do a little bit of a kick on the mm. way down just to, yeah, keep yourself in 60. position. Sure. Um, just having that monofin on your feet tends to make you fall back and forward a bit. It's a little right. tricky. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's such a big, basically, sail. Right, she's uh, there. Dodge down. Whew. Coming up. Really nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice because it catches so much water. When, as you're finning, but it also catches the water as you're trying to relax. Yeah. So any movement or like maybe even slight like out of placement of the fin can transfer over to the entire body. It doesn't take much. No. Yeah. Oh, but it's just so much fun though. <laughs> it's so fast. It's so nice to do a dive that's really fast. Right. This could almost be a, a up. two minute dive for yeah. 70 meters. And she's announced two minutes and 10 seconds. Yeah. And I mean, she'll be ahead of schedule for sure. Yeah, Mia's such a strong diver. She's been very active. I met her in Cyprus last year. Dive it up, uh, yeah, she's such a strong and competent and yeah, powerful diver. Uh, easy. Easy dive. <laughs> and this Very thing with, with her, she her, these dives always look easy. She's just like uh, blasting so out nice. 70 meters, just like it's nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice way to end the comp. <laughs> Beautiful way to end the comp. Yeah. For anyone interested in taking some courses with Mia, she does a lot of really My great God. stuff online with teaching. <laughs> Um, lots of uh, equalization workshops and all of that. Uh, she definitely knows what she's talking about. Cool. Um, what is your favorite discipline? I think uh, my favorite is probably free immersion. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, but my like my best is no fins. Um, yeah, no fins or free immersion. It's a, it's a probably a tie. They're okay. both really nice. Um, I think like most women tend to be stronger with the lower body, but for some reason I have a stronger upper body. So I like okay. like the no fins and the free immersion is really like upper body sure. like disciplines, and then the bi fins and the mono fin is more like more lower, body, lower and body. I have really weak legs. <laughs> the bi fins is especially really hard. Ah, uh, well you've been working out quite hard. Yeah, I'm getting that. Yeah. I'm working on it. Yeah. So you're doing lots of posting of your workouts and that sort of stuff. Yeah. So, so slow, slowly, yeah, build up some, yeah, leg strength. Exactly. Uh, let's see, questions from the chat. Uh, Mariana's fine. Uh, she came back here, she breathed some oxygen, she's already gone, she's already back to shore. <laughs> totally fine. Um, and we were joking about, about sort of figuring out when she, because uh, she just recently had a LMC. I don't know if you saw that or not. In training? Or? Uh, no, just just now. Oh, uh, in the dive. competition. Yeah. Oh, I didn't see it. Yeah, yeah. yeah she uh, had an LMC at around four or five meters. Yeah. Um, and yeah, she was talking about how, like, in the top ten meters, uh, that's generally the danger zone, quote unquote, for for having a blackout, especially during a deep dive. Yeah, definitely. Um, again, because of those partial pressures of gases. Yeah. Um, you can end up 
pulling oxygen out of the blood into the lungs where it can't be used by the body. Yeah, it's such a massive pressure change in that last 10 meters. Like that's the greatest pressure difference in the whole dive. And, and as well as that, at the same time, you're at the end of your dive. So you're, you're at exhausted. the end of your performance and that's yeah. when your oxygen levels are starting to get a little too low. Right. So yeah, if it's gonna happen, that's when it's probably gonna happen. Right, exactly. Well, and that's why we have all of our safeties um, in the water and watching from 40, 30 meters. Yeah. Uh, Cause that's when you're sort of entering into that danger zone of those partial pressures being not as kind to you as you would like them to be. Yeah, we have a really great safety team at this competition. Actually, I felt Fantastic. like super comfortable diving here and like knowing you can push the limits a little bit because like they've got your back. Um, and if you're ever going to like at a competition like this is the place to really test out your limits and see what you're capable of and in a, in a safe in environment. In a safe way, for sure. Um, yeah, no, knowing that safety team's there and even the scooter, so we've got like deep safety. So even if something goes wrong really deep, which it shouldn't but you never know you never it's, know it's good to know they're there yeah for sure yeah. for sure okay let's see uh, cool great up next we have clementine marie of france 63 meter dive announced dive time of two minutes and 20 seconds Clementine is using bifins. Um, so with constant weight, uh, bif the bifins discipline is, is very new. Um, and so for a long time, uh, it was just constant weight, free immersion, and no fins. Mm. And recently, with adding bifins, uh, it's now its own separate discipline. Uh, so off I got a lot of questions about like why people are using bifins during the, the monofin dive, quote unquote. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's something that divers can do if they want to. Yeah, well, it used to be that there was, yeah, only constant weight. So if you didn't have a monofin, then you had no choice. And so you were competing against people with monofins wearing bifins. Right. But it's, yeah, now we have that discipline. So now we can separate it a bit. And it's, yeah, the people with the monofin don't have such an advantage. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I mean, you're catching so much more water with a monofin. You can generate more power with the monofin. Mm, you're using big or muscle groups, you're using your core in, instead of the bifins is just your legs. And right. you build up so much lactic acid doing the, the flutter kick. <laughs> like, yeah, so much lactic acid. Yeah, it's, a, it's a really hard discipline. I really admire people that can do it, actually, because I, I really struggle with this discipline more than any other, definitely. Mm. Yeah. But each diver is different. Each one has their own things that they love and yeah. hate. Yeah, that's right. You have your strengths and your weaknesses. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, and some people are totally fine using bifins. Actually, I believe... I believe Abdel... Uh, Abdul Latif Al Wash of France last year in Cyprus got second place in constant on the constant weight day using bifins. Oh wow! <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, that's he, I mean he's an absolute machine. Yeah. Uh, I might be misremembering that, uh, but you can check all the results from previous competitions on the Ada website. Uh, so you can check that and tell me if I'm right or wrong. <laughs> Fact check me. And Clementine too is also a really strong bifin diver and a strong no fin diver as well. Mm. Yeah. Our diver on the line is Clementine Marie, representing France. Yeah, we saw her on the surface there, submerge her airways and then wait a second. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about why some divers might? Do I actually um, don't duck dive like this, so I'm not entirely <laughs> sure, but it, it seems to me like it's just a relaxing way to start the dive, mm. I would guess, like maybe do like a, a pre-equalization on the surface and yeah, start that dive in a nice relaxed state. Um, sure. Yeah, but I don't start like Dirty face down, um, <laughs> so I'm Fair enough. not entirely sure. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, I know some divers, and especially like new students have this sort of tendency to want to rush and like yeah. smash their face into the Get water and start their dive. Possible. Um, I mean, to be I'm fair, you know, sure. you thinking about it logically, you're like, hey, cool, I took my final breath, I want to get in the water as fast as possible to start this thing. Mm. Um, but really, you know, if you take a few extra Please seconds on the surface now. to maintain that relaxation, um, do a nice duck dive, of, an efficient duck dive, you actually end up conserving more oxygen than you would if you had just... Early at 57! Maybe just some Early sticky turn. ears on the last day. It's yeah. been a long wake up diving. Totally. Yeah, that's something that we haven't really discussed is like the effect of lots of deep dives 
uh, and doing a lot of these dives just across a week. Mm, I know one of my ears is definitely ready for a rest after this, <laughs> Aaron. I know how that feels. Yeah. I well, mean, it's also very easy to get outer ear infections. Yep. Um, and you're in the I'm water every day. Pretty sure I have one. I'm my right ear at the safety. moment, so I'm just jumping in for 10 Twins, minutes between the breaks. Mm. I think it's the warm water too, the hot, like, humid environment. It's not good mm. for ears. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. But she looks very relaxed. Yeah, it looks totally fine. Bend up. Looking to see where the surface is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Am I there yet? Yeah. Am I there yet? <laughs> It's always hard on an early turn. It's a bit discouraging and it seems like a long way back to the surface sometimes. Right. Oh, but she's Big smile. Fine. Yeah, all good. Yeah, something to note too is that, you know, you can still do an early turn and have a beautiful dive. Yeah, that's like, right. It can still feel really good. <laughs> and if you want to turn, you early turn. It's all good. Yellow card. So, yellow card, no tag. She will still receive some points. Uh, she announced, uh, let's see, she announced 63. Yeah, so she didn't turn too early. Yeah, she'll, she'll still have a fair number of points because she got quite close to the bottom. I think she turned at 58 or something, 57. Sometimes on the last day it's nice to just announce a depth like that maybe is a PB or you haven't done before and just, you know, see how you go and test yeah. out the EQ and it either works or it doesn't, but, you know, last day of comp, it's worth a shot. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, yeah, and, yeah, again, it's been, a, it's been a long comp and, like, even even the rest days in between, like, because, you know, women will have a day and they'll take a break and have a day and take a break, mm. uh, even... Even still, like on that rest day, you're just thinking about your next dive. Yeah, and a lot of us are still in the water, like coaching the guys as well. So, um, right. yeah, so we're still in the water every day and yeah. <laughs> out on the beach and in the sun. And so it's, yeah. Exactly. So it's it's sort of like a rest day, but I mean, mentally, it's definitely not much of a rest day. And yeah, you're still, some of the divers, divers are in the water. So, mm. how much of a rest day is it actually? Mm. Cool. Uh, anybody you want to thank? Anybody you want to shout out to at home? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I want to thank uh, yeah my freediving club, Brisbane Freediving Club. Thank you so much for all the training. Um, like my training in depth has gone so well, and it's definitely because of because of the training in the pool leading up to this competition, mm. and and my gym, Pit Stop West End, the best gym in Brisbane, and okay. also my workplace, uh, Coffee Machine Specialist, who have been super supportive, um, allowing me all this time off to go chase these crazy dreams. So yeah, and to represent my your friends country. and family. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's been awesome being here. It's been cool. a really nice experience. Awesome. Good. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, thanks so much for joining me. Yeah, thanks for having me, Brandon. It's such a pleasure. We'll see <laughs> yeah. you uh, later on tonight. Yeah, see you later. Cool. How do I get out of here? Oh, uh, good question. <laughs> you can just scoot up this way. Thank you. There we go. Awesome. That has been Amber Burke, uh, Australian national record holder, generally amazing human being. Okay. Let's see. Going to check the questions. Let's see. Question from Silas. Uh, do you think the spirit of the community will change when the sport is getting more professional and more athletes become dependent on winning comps? Ooh. That's a good question. And that, that's something that's been floated around in the community for a while now. Um, Personally, I'm a very optimistic person. Uh, I would like to think that this community will continue to stay as supportive and as loving as it has always been. This has been the, the, the way that we've been for quite a long time. It's ingrained in the community. Uh, I would think it would take a lot to sort of destroy that. But it's, it's also difficult to say. I mean, we're getting into a little bit of a um, existential uh, realm with that question. Um, but I'd like to stay positive and to think that <clears throat> the, the vibe of the community, the love that we have for each other will continue to push through and be what shines more than uh, being a jerk and 
just going for the money. <laughs> so that is my hope, at least. Uh, Vladi says, I figure there's no rivalry in freediving because it's a competition with yourself against the best part of the world, which is the sea. Um, yeah, I think that's true. I think there are also some rivalries, um, which is okay. Uh, I mean, you know, as we said before with uh, Talia Davidoff and Natalie uh, Rudman of South Africa, they're always sort of pushing back and forth on each other. One takes the record, the other takes the record, the other takes the record. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, but I think it's sort of almost a friendly rivalry. Um, and in a lot of ways that can be very good for a sport. Um, it means that records don't sit for too long. It means that uh, there's always interest in the community. There's always new things happening uh, for continental and national records. It keeps things interesting. Uh, so, but I mean, ultimately you're right. Primarily you are competing against yourself and your own personal bests. Uh, and to do that, you have to know yourself very, very well uh, and be very well trained in uh, the things that you do and all of that. Uh, shout out to Lieber uh, that is watching from the first time and supporting our national competitor, Anna. Ah, uh, nice. Okay, I got that Zelenska of Poland is down now. She's now 60 meters. Again, diving with bifins. Some divers will choose to dive with bifins during constant weight because it's more comfortable for them. Uh, perhaps because they have more experience with bifins than with a monofin. Some divers just don't have a monofin. Um, and, yeah, it's, again, ultimately up to the diver to decide how they want to dive, what they want to dive with. Fifty down. Something that you'll notice with Agata as well is that she is not pinching her nose <clears throat> uh, to equalize. She is a hands-free diver. Touch down. Okay, grabbing the tag. Coming up. And coming back up giving us a thumbs up, letting us know she is a-okay. Uh, Agatha Please does hands up. free, which means she can voluntarily open her eustachian tubes on her own uh, without having to force air through them by pushing uh, and, and doing a frenzel. <coughs> What's also interesting with Agatha is that she uh, wears a low volume mask. Thirty up. Uh, that adds a little bit of an extra, extra level of difficulty uh, to her dive because she also needs to regulate the amount of air that goes into her mask. Um, if she takes a mouth fill and doesn't regulate it, it can just get sucked into her mask. Twenty up. And then she won't have that air to use for equalizing because it's all been moved. So, very Man. technical what she's doing. Okay, Agatha is up. Clean surface protocol. Lips, ooh, got some glare here. Maybe a little pale, a little blue, so meaning she's a little hypoxic, but looking totally okay here. And that's a white card for Agatha. Uh, very nice dive for her. Yep, got some movement up here on the boat. I'm a passing jet ski. Making things interesting. Yeah, really the only time that we have movement on the surface up here is when a boat passes by and we get a few waves from the wake and then we go back to being totally calm again. Hi, Agatha. 
shout out to her sponsor, uh, Pulse 2, her TV channel, uh, Agatha's an actress. Okay. Ooh, another good question from Sebastian. Uh, Sebastian asks, uh, what do you think is the best time of day to do breathing exercises? Ah, uh, let's see. So, I have a lot of experience with this. Uh, I lead breath uh, coaching sessions for individuals and for groups. Uh, generally, the best time to do uh, breathing exercises and breath work uh, would be in the morning uh, as you wake up. Uh, that's because you have an empty stomach, uh, your heart rate is already fairly low, you're nice and relaxed, you haven't had the stress of the day sort of going yet. Um, if you cannot do it in the morning, then the next best time to do it would be uh, before you eat something. Um, we want to try and keep our stomachs nice and empty uh, as we're taking a full breath in. Having a full stomach, that can make us feel a bit uncomfortable. <clears throat> Uh, the other thing with uh, keeping an empty stomach is that if you're doing any kind of FRC or RV holds, uh, where you take a full breath in and then let the air out naturally, sort of just let the air rush out on its own and then hold, uh, or do RV where you blow all the air out and hold, uh, both of those, again, uh, have an impact on the stomach area uh, and can be very uncomfortable can make you feel like puking, especially if you're experiencing contractions. Uh, it can be not as nice. <laughs> uh, and with static sessions, we always want to be uh, enjoying them and feeling good about them and making sure that we have an empty stomach is one of those ways. Cool. I hope that answers your question. Uh, let's see, do divers warm up for their dives before they go? Uh, another good question. Yeah, if you look behind me... Nope, not that way. Not that way. Ah, the boats have moved. Okay, that's why we don't see anything behind me. Uh, we do have three buoys in the water uh, with the dive setup uh, that we have. Uh, so divers will get to the main boat where they can change all of their gear. Ah, uh, there we go. So we sort of see the red buoys off on the right-hand side. Uh, that boat in the far back, the red one, is the emergency evac boat. The next one closest is the boat where divers put all their gear, get ready, put their wetsuits on. They jump in the water. If they want to, they can go to the red buoys where they will do any sort of warm-ups that they want to do. Some divers will do uh, some hangs. Other divers will do a uh, FRC dive or RV dive. Um, and then as they're ready, they will uh, come up and they'll move to the platform that we see sitting closest to the screen, closest to us, where they will lay there, they will rest, they will relax, do any final visualizations that they want to do, and then they'll jump into the water, and within the area closest to the bottom of the screen, that is the competition One area. Up next, we have Kuo Yun of Chinese Taipei. She has announced a 60 meter dive with announced dive time of 2 minutes and 15 seconds. Thirty seconds till she begins. Uh, in this time, uh, each diver is different. Again, some divers will do a visualization where they see themselves doing their dive, others will visualize some sort of very happy moment in their lives where they felt comfortable and happy and relaxed. Um, other divers will do what's called a body scan where they scan starting from their toes up over their feet, up over their legs uh, for any tension that they might be holding. If they sense any, they will intentionally relax it away and continue scanning up over the body until they've scanned everything and everything's completely relaxed. Uh, and essentially what they're trying to do during that uh, time is reduce the heart rate and stay totally relaxed. Is 
It's an absolute pleasure to answer your questions. If you have any more, please do feel free to post them. Again, I could talk all day about free diving, but I'd rather talk about the things that you guys are curious about rather than the things that just come out of my face. Okay, so we have an early turn. I believe that Hua Yun has been having a few issues with EQ during this competition. Uh, and as we said, when in doubt, early turn. Something that we haven't talked about yet is uh, with your equalization, if you ever feel any kind of pain or discomfort in your ears, you have missed equalizations and you've gone too deep, you should immediately turn around and come back up. Realistically, if you're equalizing with the correct frequency, you should never feel anything in your ears. Uh, if you are feeling something, you have missed an EQ. Okay. She's up, giving the okay sign. This should be a yellow card. Although it's possible she may have pulled on the line at the very top. It's difficult to sort of tell. Um, but unless the judges saw something that I didn't, this should be a yellow card. Okay, yellow card, early turn. Because she did not bring a tag back with her. But finishing off with a big smile, getting a little toe uh, from our safeties. Probably one of the best parts of being at a big competition like this is all of the free rides that you get uh, from safeties, from coaches, all of that. Hi, do you want to come talk? Cool. Perfect. No, we've got a little bit of time. Um, yeah. Yep. Will you tell me when to stop? Will you can you start me, now. Will you give me the sign when to stop? Yes, of course. Hello. Hello. Hi. Congratulations on your dive. Thank you very much. Beautiful dive. Yes. Um, I wanted to ask, so you do hands-free yes. uh, and equalize hands-free, mm -hmm. uh, which means that you're basically pulling the eustachian tubes open and allowing the air to flow from your oral cavity to your nasal cavity and then up into your middle ears. Yeah. How are you, are you also controlling the air that goes into the mask? Yeah, I have to. Okay, yes. So how are you doing that? I have to blow to my nose a little bit. Okay. So sometimes I move like my face like a rabbit Okay. my nose. And I have to sometimes unglue the mask. Uh, but uh, funny thing is, when my ears they hear the they feel the water mm -hmm. when I'm on the surface, they start they start already working, which is click 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 click. Ah, click, 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 okay. Click, click. They do this already before the start. Wow. So they get used to when they feel the water, they already are they start all heavy going work. on their own. This method is very nice, but it's very gentile. It has pluses, minuses, like every method. Mm. I, I have to take care very, very, very for my ears. And uh, see, when I was a kid, what was, what was funny, I was always sick for my ears, ah, okay. my middle ear, and so on. I was, I was like every year, like three, four times as a, when I was a child, which is very funny. Yeah, because now you're using them for great, great <laughs> yes, effect. Yes, <laughs> of course, I will increase my method, and probably soon I will go. I will start without mask. I will see. I will okay. see. Uh, I I dive with no skip as well till 45 for sure. Okay. That's what I know. Yeah, yeah. But I like to see. To of watch, course, of course. To discover. If it's not a competition, usually when I go deep, uh, I look what is around. Of course. Uh, I start to listen because my ears are open, so I mm -hmm. hear very well under the water. Mm. Uh, so, um, but I have to. It's still work ahead of me. Of Maybe course, work. as I mean, as every diver does, even those yeah, at the top, there, exactly. there's so much more to learn, so much more to learn about the sport yeah. and about technique and discipline. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. All of us have something more to learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but you know, having hands free, it's like uh, nice. But it's like um, 
different muscles a little bit they work than mouthfeel. Mm. And to, for example, learn to know I don't do mouthfeel yet. Mm -hmm. And to do mouthfeel, I have to unlearn something, which is more hard. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. <laughs> which yeah. is hard. So, so I need to. Um, I'm, I'm, I actually I did PBs during this competition. Yeah. I didn't know that I go 62. So okay. I checked here. All PBs my were here under the judge eyes and your camera. Okay. Eye. <laughs> wow. So beautiful. That's amazing. <laughs> I never did. I didn't have so much time for training. <laughs> uh, I was like two weeks in Charm in Andrea Zuccari in the free diving world, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then after I was I had only four sessions in deep spot in Poland. That's okay. it. Wow. So I mean, you've made a lot of progress in that time. Yeah, I wanted uh, actually. I I dived uh, till May, and, and from May till uh, June. I had I had I, June July beginning July I had break which mm. was uh, well I had to have this break so I was little so I had doubts to go here or not what is what how deep I can go so mm. I'm very happy that I could check here that I can achieve this uh, depth yeah and you you absolutely have seemingly quite easily um, your dives have all looked very beautiful very technically correct yeah, yeah. thank you <laughs> yeah it looks very nice. Okay, I keep cross fingers for my colleague. Yes, absolutely, yes. Yukine Toshinaga coming up. Uh, do you want to stay and watch the dive or are you going to... Um, I know you're, you're probably really hot in the wetsuit, so I don't want to yeah, hold you for you too long. Much, <laughs> thank you cool, very sounds much. Sounds good. All right, guards. Okay. Up next we have Yukine Toshinaga of Japan. She's now 55 meters. Our third to last dive of the day. Let's ban that bot in the chat. Very nice. One minute. Diving, she is designing costumes and swimsuits. Uh, she is team minions during this competition. Uh, her and her teammate Ayumi. Uh, and if you even go onto her profile for uh, Ada, you'll see her photo of her. There is a picture of her in a mermaid's tail. I believe that she uh, designed herself. Well, uh, Leonel, I'll get to your question just now. Our diver on the line representing Japan is Yukine Toshinaga. The announced depth is 55 meters. The announced time is 2 minutes 10 seconds. 2, 1, 0. Oh. 20, down. Yukine says the most important part of her training has been working on her relaxation 30, and no. comfort at depth. Uh, I know that's a lot of uh, what divers sort of need to work on uh, is the relaxation. It's, it can be kind of easy in the beginning 40, to push no. your way down, especially when you're taking a free diving course and you're trying to uh, do the course requirements. It can be an easy thing to do to sort of try and push and just just blast out these dives, um, but it can oftentimes be uh, damaging in a lot of ways uh, to your overall. Oop! Pass down. Being bonk on the bottom, uh, but looking okay. Fifty up. <laughs> Sometimes the divers just so relaxed that they miss their alarms, uh, and they will either go past the bottom. Uh, or they will uh, land directly on the bottom. Uh, other divers may also not use alarms, uh, and they rather just go based on feel. Dirty up. Uh, there is safety. also sometimes a risk <laughs> to, uh, to do what we saw uh, with Yukine, which is looking totally fine. 20 up. Okay. 
Captain Yukina is one of our divers using bifins. Ben! Waving to the photographer. I believe that, yeah, that's Luke. Making sure that he's staying out of the way. <laughs> okay, Lily, I don't know if you're still in the chat, uh, but Yukine is one of my favorites because of her massive smile. Lily was asking me earlier uh, who my favorite diver was. Uh, and while I resented the question, uh, I can say with absolute certainty, Yukine is one of my favorites because of that massive smile of hers. And Ayumi is not far behind with massive smiles, the both of them. Such great teammates, uh, always supporting each other. Uh, generally, only one of them is diving in the day, the other one is uh, doing the coaching. Um, yeah, they are just the sweetest. <laughs> okay, Leona, uh, you asked, uh, at what depths do folks experience freefall? Does it depend on how they are weighted? Uh, it definitely does. <laughs> Uh, definitely depends on how much they are weighted. Uh, some divers prefer to free fall more early uh, and they will wear uh, more weight. Other divers prefer to have an easier time coming back up to the surface and so they will use less weight. Um, <clears throat> Generally, you want to be neutrally buoyant uh, in around the top one-third of your dive, uh, as you're getting to like one-third. Uh, and obviously with competition that is, that is different. Um, but you especially want to be neutrally buoyant uh, in shallower depths above where you're diving. Uh, you don't want to be, like if you're diving over coral, uh, you don't want to be super heavy or super light because if you're too heavy, you're crashing into the coral, which is not great. Uh, don't destroy the coral. Uh, and if you're too light, you're always battling to stay down. Um, so you generally want to be neutral if you're fun diving above where you're diving. Um, but that all requires you to sort of know what your uh, buoyancy is with using a wetsuit. Um, any other kind of gear that you're wearing, all of that. Uh, a very quick and easy way to check your buoyancy is to put on a mask uh, and then fully exhale all the air out of your lungs and then hold your breath and see where the water level comes to. Uh, if it comes to your eyes and it stays there, you are neutrally buoyant and you are pretty much okay. If you are either out of the water more or if you start to sink. So if, you're, if you start to sink, you're wearing too much weight, you can take some off. If you are positively buoyant, you could add a little bit more. I don't think I've really ever seen somebody who has done that test and is positively buoyant. Generally, people always wear too much weight. Um, and that is not good. You don't want to be too overweighted uh, because that can be unsafe. Um, if you want to learn more about weighting yourself correctly and safety and diving correctly, go take a free diving course. As I always say, it's the best and easiest way for you to get all the information you need to start diving safely. You will learn how to uh, have the correct technique with your disciplines. Uh, you'll work with a coach who will correct them for you. Uh, and Man, you are looking for filler. I'm a little bit looking for filler, <laughs> but that's what I have you for. What do we got happening? Exciting day. Very exciting day, yes. I'm joined by Chris, our head of safety for the competition. Uh, Chris is a fantastic human being. That's what I tell people. <laughs> as you should, as you should. <laughs> um, so if you guys have any questions about the safety team, uh, please do put them in the chat. Where do you see that coming through? That comes uh, through I have them on my phone. That's good. Um, one question that I've gotten quite a bit is how do you get started in safety? Like if you want to become a safety. Um, One minute. Oof, that's a good question. Definitely um, getting stronger in, with your diving capabilities, but then just approaching any local organizer where they've got small competitions. So starting small with competition and, and building up from there. 
just mm. experience Every, everything's experience so uh, it's amazing how many life experiences that you go through that will actually benefit you as a safety diver mm. it doesn't have to be just diving but all whether it's medical or here it's rope work or sailing or not so all that stuff ties together yeah uh, I come from a climbing background so the use you know, a lot of the equipment that we use for competitions comes across from the, the, the maritime or the climbing trade so you see a lot of ropes a lot of carabiners yeah absolutely the climbers out there our daily setup we use a lot of prussics to install our system and looking at the prussics now so oh, okay we have a lot of prussics in place that we just clip into to set the boat and the, okay. and the platform and everything oh, nice. here we go okay we have Janisa Kukula of Finland Five, four, 42 meter dive three, two, and that's dive time of one and a half minutes Four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, there she goes. Her coach Tommy passing in on the surface. Always watching and waiting. Let me clean the screen of yours. Could use a little bit of a screen uh, clean. Alright. People keep jumping around me and the water keeps splashing up. Twenty down. It's been fabulous having a few uh, representatives, rep representatives from Finland here this year. It's been beautiful. It's always great. These guys are super sweet. So sweet. 30 the, down! Dare I say the nicest team. <laughs> you can deal with that afterwards. I'll, yeah, I'll deal with yeah. the fallout from that later. <laughs> yeah. But I'll back you up on it. Cool. Yeah. No, they, I mean, they're they're always so... I mean, I, I hung out with them a lot in Bulgaria as well. Yeah, she's um, coming the ball. There we oh, go. Oh, ball again. Coming up. Giving a strong pull on the line. Nice two hands on the line, nice and secure. Yep. Looks like she's just enjoying that dive. Yeah, no, it's a beautiful looking dive. 30, up! So the safety is already in, so the safety would have left while she's on her way down. There's John. Yeah, yeah, how does the safety decide when they should come down and meet a diver? Uh, generally, we're 20, running on the up. announced dive time. Mm. With this combination of listening to where they are on the sonar. Um, if, if there's a uh, a drop in sonar, we always uh, have our own communication, give them a bit of a wave of the camera. Bam! Mm. But we pretty much run on the uh, announced dive times. Okay. Very, Very nice. Here. Yeah. They're a little wobbly. Grab it up nice and high on the line, keeping your airways far away from the water. Okay. Giving an okay sign. I believe she has the tag in her other hand, high up on the line. Very happy there. Very yeah. yeah. She's had some great dives this calm. She has. Been, they've been a great team. They've been lovely. I'm just going to go and do some work, actually. Cool. I'll be right back if you want. Uh, can I give you one question to think about? Let me, uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Go. I'll, I'll go for it. Right you do your thing. Chris is always working. Yellow card, or sorry, not yellow card, a white card for Yanisa. Congratulations to her. Chris is over here on the line helping pull uh, and set the depth. Uh, we have a big uh, line system with a counterweight on one end and the bottom plate on the other side. And then it gets drawn up and over the boat um, to keep everything nice and ready in case we need to drop the counterweight and pull up a diver if need be. Let's see, Leona, I will let him know uh, that you're watching uh, as he comes back over. Mm. Chris is doing a fantastic job, hey? He's leading a really great team of safeties here. He's incredibly experienced. He led the team last year at the Cypress Step Little Championship as well. <clears throat> Joining us again one more time, because we do have some questions for you. Oh, nice. Um, let's see. Hopefully you've got some answers. Cool. Leona Chang says, hi, uh, you got oh. her into free diving, <laughs> uh, so shout out to you. She did a course with Hello Leona. Just did a course with me recently, actually. Oh, nice. Awesome. Yeah, very awesome. Very nice. Uh, what is it like training for safety? Um, or is there a training for safety? There's specific requirements that we have to be able to achieve, you know, be, be able to we'll be strong enough in the water that we can perform competent rescues and be mm. ready to, to shoot down you know, on a moment's notice. So. Sure. But uh, most of the, well, all these guys here are pretty much uh, freediving instructors, so uh, teaching is one of the best uh, tools for 
um, get a new fitness up. Mm. Like these photographers are finding it at the moment, up and down, up and down, up and down. Yeah, diving um, all the time. So, <laughs> waving to our photographer Luke Coley, a good friend of mine from Mexico. Yeah. So, Awesome guy. So for training, um, strength is different things you can do. Uh, one of the things I used to love to do at the end of a session is actually, after finished uh, the training session, I actually swim down or put, you know free motion down to the weights and then swim the weights up. Mm. So I used to do that on a regular basis. You know, swimming, yeah. always do it under supervision. You know, always, of course. Even though we're safeties, we make sure we're safe for each other. Of course. Never dive alone. Never dive alone. Safety. Even here, we keep a close eye on the photographers. Uh, yep. We're watching each other, so yeah. never make assumptions, which is a very important part. Very important part, yeah, for sure. But uh, swimming weights up from depth is a good way to start. So. Definitely, definitely a workout if you haven't tried it. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Uh, Apnea Galapagos says hello, Chris. Oh, You're hello. doing an amazing job, which I agree with. That's my friend Jesse. Uh, Apnea oh, Galapagos, nice. uh, shout out. He's over in uh, was he in Bonaire at the moment, I think. He was jumping around, so Beautiful. nice. I don't know if you're on the camera, but is that us? Yep, that's us. That's, oh, Jesus. Can we cut to something else? A lot of glare. <laughs> uh, let's see. Silas uh, says, are the positions of the safety divers always the same, or do they rotate? We're in constant rotation. So mm. uh, the deep safety will then uh, go into rest position. So uh, depending on the numbers in the pit, we always run at a minimum of three people. So number one is the deep safety. Number two is the... Uh, the shallower safety and number three remains on the surface but uh, all safety is watching if, if someone has a equalization problem like number one goes down we'll quickly substitute number two will go deep and number three will quickly slot slot into number two's position mm. so we're watching each other constantly yeah so we're watching each other and also watching the diver start because it gives a lot of information watching the diver going down the feedback and how they're looking and the relaxation and if they're playing with equipment it tells us a lot about the dive and what we might expect on their dive sure it's been a very good day. Most of, I was able to get out of the water for the end of the session oh, here. We had a last diver, Anna, yeah, from last Honduras. Diver, Anna from Honduras. She's been training here at Royal Free Dive Centre. Yeah. And she's a lovely diver. And it's good to see uh, uh, records being set for Honduras. Yeah, absolutely. This will be a, another national record attempt. 35 metres. My friend Edgardo, he has the uh, male records for Honduras. If you're watching Edgardo, I want to see you get your bum back in the water and do some more records. Absolutely. But he lives up in uh, San Pedro Sula. Ah, oh, okay, okay. A good friend of all of the uh, operators and organizers here. Awesome. Yeah, it's so good to see how like how strong the community is here. Uh, everyone's always supportive of each other and hanging out, and it's really really nice. Big thing coming to these competitions. It's it really is a family reunion. Mm. Uh, we met last year, and it's Absolutely. good to catch up again. And yeah. I very briefly got to speak last year because yes, last year was way busy. Way busier. Yeah, <laughs> two lines with a hundred and thirty athletes. 30 plus athletes? I, I counted watching over, over 500, 550 starts. Oh. And watched every, watched the start and finish of every one of them. Yeah, so, wild. It's been a nice, comfortable competition. Yeah. And it's only at the end of the day here. I know these girls are going to behave themselves. I feel comfortable to get out of the water. Yeah, exactly. Whereas other, the shenanigans earlier in the session. <laughs> but these girls are pushing and there's beautiful dives today. Beautiful They're dives really, today. Really yeah, so much. Impressive. Beautiful technique to watch. Um, yeah. And some serious depths achieved. Serious depths for sure. Yeah, Jennifer Venland with uh, 102 meters, Mariana getting to 104, and then Oof, yeah, that last, the, last the wheels, few meters. The, wheel, the wheels fell off in the very last few meters, yeah. so unfortunately. Uh, was, uh, but um, both pushing hard. Absolutely. And both, uh, Jennifer only just sort of scraping through with her surf, the surface yeah, protocol. Yeah, that was wild to see as well. <laughs> Had us all on edge. Five, Definitely. Four, let's see Anna heading off to uh, 35 meters. Yeah. So, uh, I'm sadly finishing the girls for the competition. Yeah, this is the last dive for the women. It's kind of wild. Feels like we only started just yesterday. It does. It's, uh, it's amazing how quick these days do pass. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure your body doesn't feel like it started yesterday, but... No, everyone gets, gets a little bit tired. The ears get a little bit tired by the end of the session. I've noticed my ears uh, a little bit slow to function today. For sure. Yeah, yeah, a few on, EQ Anna. issues today, too. Mm -hmm. A few EQ issues to yeah. today, too. Yeah, for some of the girls as well. Yeah. yeah Anna looking nice and relaxed, giving a few kicks and then gliding. Uh, keeping nice. her... Oh. Oh. Uh, yeah. oh, sorry, Anna. So it looks beautiful. up. Ah, that's the thing with, with looking down, and especially in, in water like this where it's so crystal clear. Um, and she's only a few meters from the bottom it's there. Very close. But if you decide it's time to turn, it's time to turn. Exactly. And just commit to it and go with it. 
yeah, when I'm teaching, it's uh, looking for what your destination point always uh, causes the wheels to fall off. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it messes with your EQ, it pulls you out of position. And it just messes with your brain in terms of if you're still a few meters off. You know, exactly. Everything just unravels. Exactly. And you still get through a protocol for a yellow card. Yeah. Nice clean okay. protocol. Nice competition, Anna. It's great to yeah, see you. Yeah, very nice to see her here. Great job putting up some national records. We need to see more and more of it here every year in the Caribbean Cup. Absolutely. Beautiful competition here. It's uh, coming on to 10 years. Oh, 10 Next years. Year. Okay. Uh, first competition was in 93, so... No, okay. sorry, uh, 13. So next year will be a 10 year anniversary. Oh, wow. Okay. That's a wrap for the girls. That's a wrap for the girls. Yellow card for Ana Rivera. Uh, some of those points will count to her overall standing, um, but not obviously the entire number. Okay, cool. All right. Thanks, Thanks Chris. Guys. Nice to hear from some of the people at home. Yeah, absolutely. Chris has to go to work. Um, I'm going to finish work. Uh, make sure you're following all of our sponsors, uh, Atmos, uh, Double K, the Paradise Beach Hotel, and the Mayan Princess Resort. Uh, make sure you're following me at Brandon Freediver on Instagram. Make sure you're following Ada Freediving on Instagram. Uh, all the results will be posted either at the link in the YouTube chat on this side, uh, or you can follow me. I'm posting the, the behind the scenes stuff as well as the results. Um, let's see, big thanks to all of our athletes who competed today. And we'll see you guys tomorrow for the Constant Weight Men's Day, the final day of the competition. See you guys then. Bye. Double K is a manufacturer of premium diving equipment in Korea, a vibrant and creative country. At Double K, we focus on constant research to develop innovative and comfortable products to enhance the experience of diving for our customers. We take pride in our cutting edge and stylish designs, providing a sleek yet professional look whether you're in or out of the water. From wetsuits to fins, masks to equalization tools, Double K has all the free diving accessories you will need. Fall in love with your diving with Double K. Inspired by the ocean. Location, speed, direction, altitude, atmosphere. Mission two is more than a watch. It follows you wherever you go. On the journey to ageless energy, We won't fear the unknown challenges. We won't hold back our curiosity. Your pulse, your tracks, your wake, the direction and achievement in your life. Distance and breath. Merging with the ocean flow. Our sweat cleansed in the currents. Get 
gets darker as we descend deeper. But your light will shine through the depth. A variety of color options. Each mission, too, embodies your personality. Thank <laughs> you. 